Another episode of our digital show today in 30. We hoped you meant to click. Let's break down what we have for you today. First, President Biden's key speech today at the U.N. It's his first there since he took office. And Savannah had the chance to speak with one of the leaders in the audience, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Yeah, he's making a big push for world leaders to sink a lot of money into the fight against climate change. And that's just one of the topics we yeah. discussed. It was really wide ranging. It was an exclusive conversation. We'll have that for you coming up. And speaking of the environment, it is the focus of our new series on air and online. It's called Today Climate. And now we'll get things started with an eye-opening ride in a mobile lab that can detect surprising ways that we're all contributing to air pollution. Plus, we got a chance to visit with Amanda mm. Gorman, the young poet. She wowed at the inauguration. She's sharing a powerful new message. It's aimed at kids, a children's book, and it's talking about achieving your dreams. All that. Plus, we're going to show you how to kick up a boxed dessert mix with three hacks that are a piece of cake. From one of my favorite bakers. It's the milk bar. The, you know, love the milk bar. The milk love bar. Christina Tosi. Let's get to it. Let's just go straight to the cake. It's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. NBC's Chief White House Correspondent and Weekend Today, co-anchor of Peter Alexander's at the U.M. with the latest. Hey, Peter, good morning. Hey, Hoda, good morning to you. This speech wrapping up only a short time ago, a much more traditional United Nations speech from President Biden, his debut speech before the General Assembly, and focusing heavily on trying to rebuild partnerships, to revitalize alliances, and to restore the U.S.'s position as the global leader, but he is facing a lot of pushback on a series of topics, including the chaotic troop withdrawal from Afghanistan, as well as more recently, the U.S. excluding France from a submarine deal with Australia. The president addressing some of those criticisms, and as it relates to a U.S. foreign policy overseas, saying the focus would be not on relentless war, but relentless diplomacy. U.S. military power must be our tool of last resort not our first, and it should not be used as an answer to every problem we see. Bombs and bullets cannot defend against COVID-19. To fight this pandemic, we need a collective act of science and political will. The president's focus was heavily on the coronavirus pandemic and on climate change. On coronavirus, there has been much criticism that the president is pushing to give out third shots or booster shots to many Americans when much of the world has not received it first. It's first. And here's what the president had to say specifically on climate change. Making these ambitious investments isn't just good climate policy. It's a chance for each of our countries to invest in ourselves and our own future. It's an enormous opportunity to create good-paying jobs for workers in each of our countries and to spur long-term economic growth that will improve the quality of life for all of our people. A very stark contrast between President Biden saying that America is back and his predecessor, former President Trump, with his America First policy. The president heads back to Washington today, hosting the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson at the White House. Hoda. Yeah, Peter, and again, speaking of Prime Minister Johnson, ahead of his U.S. meetings and the visit to the White House, Savannah, you had a chance to sit down with him exclusively. Yeah, we had a conversation yesterday afternoon. He's here hoping to convince top world leaders to hand over big bucks to fight climate change. A big sales pitch there. We talked to him about that and more, everything from global affairs, Afghanistan, to fatherhood. But we began with his take on the situation in Afghanistan and the recent U.S. withdrawal. How frustrating has that been for you, this withdrawal of Afghanistan that was so chaotic? My country, the, the U.K., owes a big debt to the U.S. military for the incredible professionalism and sacrifice they showed at, at that airport, at the Hamid Karzai International Airport. It was an amazing operation. It's never going to be an easy thing to do to pull out of uh, somewhere like Afghanistan after 20 years in a clean uh, and straightforward way. But you can't spend your whole time yeah. trying to run another country by proxy. It, it, and that it, was an, it was never going to be easy, but it didn't have to be that messy. Your own diplomats were stranded in Kabul. We have that mistaken drone strike. Are you frustrated that the U.S. withdrawal was so botched, frankly? I, I think that it was a massive logistical success, what they did. We, You're being we, we had quite a big, easy a, come, easy go about it, but you, you heard about it in Parliament, members of your own party. Uh, uh, Tony Blair called it tragic and unnecessary. Theresa May, member of the Conservative Party, went out after you, should the U.S. have been surprised by how quickly this collapse of Afghanistan happened? What did the intelligence it, tell you? It, it, there was a spectrum of advice, a spectrum of predictions from the intelligence people, amongst which was the possibility that Kabul would 
collapse very fast and that the Taliban would, uh, would take over very fast. Of course, uh, you, you're going to look back on it with mixed feelings. But I, I, I say this, Savannah, all the things we did in, in Afghanistan, 3.6 million uh, women and girls were educated who would not otherwise Well, what about those women education. and girls now? Sure. Uh, and we've, well, I, I agree. It's a terrible thing now to listen to some of the threats that we're hearing uh, to their potential, their, their freedom, their opportunities. But what we've got to do is work together as the, as the West to say to the new authorities in, uh, in Afghanistan, in, in Kabul, look, you, you want our cash? Uh, we want to engage with you, but you know, Afghanistan can't be a breeding ground for terror anymore. There were reports that as this collapse was happening, you tried to reach President Biden and didn't receive a call back for some 36 hours. Is that true? Don't discuss my calls with other leaders, but the best of my recollection, we talked very frankly about the whole thing. And so we you didn't feel snubbed or not sufficiently consulted as this was happening? No, not at all. No, no, no. Do you think the president was too stubborn about this total withdrawal by a certain date from Afghanistan? Uh, America has been there for, for 20 years, and it's a respectable argument to say that enough is enough. You could, do you agree they, with the decision? It sounds like you feet. do. Look, I mean, could we have done it a bit differently? Maybe we could. I, I did want to ask you about President Trump. You I mean, spoke out pretty forcefully after January 6th and the riots at the U.S. Capitol. Oh, yes. Was that a rift in the relationship between you? I'm a massive fan of American, of American democracy. I think America stands for an ideal. And that ideal is that people should be able to uh, choose their governments peacefully, one person, uh, one vote. Uh, by election, I just felt that the, some of the scenes at the at the Capitol didn't wholly correspond uh, with that. Well, that's that, pretty mild that, language. That, that, that ideal. The people were ransacking I mean, I, that, their offices. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. But I, you know, I'm 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 a, I'm a friendly and, and loving observer, and that, so I I just thought. Uh, that's, well, do you that's hold what I former said. President Trump responsible for inciting that riot? Look, I, I have no knowledge of of, of what what happened, but I, what I think is that let me put put it this way: my admiration for American democracy is undimmed. By the whole thing. Did you ever worry in those days after the election, before inauguration, about the stability of the president or what he no. might do? No, no. There are reports that General Milley, who's one of our top generals, mm -hmm. was so concerned about military action the president might take, he actually called his Chinese counterpart. Did you ever worry about anything like that in the I, final I, I, waning I, days of the Trump administration? No, to be frank, I didn't. No, I, I, I thought that, I mean, you know, the, the the polls seem to, 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 you know, oscillate to and fro, but then, you know, the, the, the people made up their mind. People here perceive you as kind of two peas in a pot. It is the job of any Prime Minister of the, of the UK to have a, a, a good relationship with the, the, the President of the United States. The US-UK relationship, we are doomed, we are fated to get along, and that's quite right. That applies to, to Donald Trump, it applies to Joe Biden, but what I will say about Joe Biden dealing with, with the, the new American president, yes, it is a breath of fresh air in the sense that there are some things on which we can really, really work together. And you knew I was going to bring it up. Climate change, you know, he's great on that. And he wants to cut CO2. He wants to get to, to net zero by 2050. And he shares with me a basic view that you can do this without penalizing the economy. You have taken a more adversarial approach with China. Just recently, there was an announcement that Australia, the UK, and the US uh, have a deal to put nuclear-powered submarines in the Australian waters. China has told Australia, you should expect the worst. China sees this as incredibly provocative. I think that's ridiculous. And there's no need whatever for anybody to construe this as adversarial towards them. Going this back a, to this is about technology transfer. Let's talk about COVID. You have 81% of your eligible citizens vaccinated right now. We're at 64%. The president has turned to mandates where he has the legal authority to do so. Do you think that's the right it's idea? Different strokes for different folks, okay? It's up to different countries to decide how they want to approach this. This is very controversial area. People feel very strongly about uh, not having the state mandate something. In my country, we're great lovers of liberty. We've had to do it by sweet reason and persuasion, and that's working. What do you do when sweet reason and persuasion don't work? Keep going. Sweet, more sweet reason.
since you became prime minister, you became a father again. You have a new yes, baby. I You're do, expecting yes. another baby. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's you have six kids. Yes. What's it like so, to have little babies in, in it's town? It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's you know, well, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work. I'll tell you that much. But it's it's I love it. I absolutely love it. And uh, I, I want you. I change a lot of nappies in case anybody. Do you really? Me. I do. I do. Stick around because there is much more coming up on Today in 30. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Good morning. Welcome to today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> <bad thing>. <laughs> <laughs> make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Boom. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. Uh, oh my gosh, okay, I, it all, we're, we're having the wave, we have all the feels, who could forget those words? That's of course Amanda Gorman. She captivated the world back in January. She became the youngest inaugural poet ever. Well, since then, she's become the first poem, poet to perform at the Super Bowl. She co-chaired the Met Gala, look at you, and she was a, named a number one New York Times best-selling author. I haven't even said half the things you've done. No, I know, and now, by the way, she's out with her debut a book, it's a picture book, it's called Change Change Sings. We are delighted to have Amanda with us. Hi. Amanda, there's so much to discuss. This book is absolutely beautiful, but boy, have you been on a whirlwind. I mean, you <laughs> kind of captivated the nation back in January. Just how has this ride been for you up to well, this point? Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here today. And I've just been riding the roller coaster, <laughs> enjoying it. You know, it hasn't even been a year yet, and I'm looking back in my life has changed. So I'm just so grateful for all of it. It's incredible. Actually, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, was that just nine months yeah, ago? Exactly. Yeah. And so much has happened. Sharing the Met Gala, you're a Harvard grad. You've, uh, you have the cover of Vogue. Actually, we have a really cute thing. Yeah. We should just roll it with your mom seeing your cover for the first time. Oh, yeah. Show that. It's so cute. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh. Well, that's not it. Sorry, we'll wrong thing. We'll they weren't it. ready for that. We'll show up. But anyway, I, I mean, I, yeah. just like, how do you even, how do you even yeah. handle such a whirlwind and such mm -hmm. an overwhelming mm -hmm. amount of attention and success mm -hmm. that fast? Mm. I'm very fortunate. I have family and friends who keep me grounded and remind me of who I am. And what often I think about is writing for me is always home. So it doesn't matter if I go to the moon and back. Whenever I pick up a pen, I'm where I belong, where I need to be, and that helps keep me planted firmly on the ground. For those who don't know your backstory, I mean, you had to overcome a speech impediment. Yes. I mean, you had poetry in your heart and soul forever. <laughs> but speaking the words was a big deal and was mm. a difficult thing to overcome. So I just thought about you because I was Googling you right before you went on and I thought, look at her standing there in front of the world, really, mm. and saying those words. How did you overcome mm. that? 
to, to be able to perform that way. Well, honestly, it took years and years of practice, speech therapy to overcome my speech impediment. I mean, I remember being 20 years old, so this is like three years ago, <laughs> and still not even being able to really fully say my last name. And so I had to put in the work, the labor. I listened to Hamilton a lot and <laughs> tried to rap with the actors. And over time, that not only kind of engaged my love for poetry, but engaged my love for my own voice to the wow. point that I could have a stage and could hear it with love and acceptance. I also love about you, Amanda, that you know that you want to run for president one day. <laughs> yes, yeah. You know the year it's going to happen when you become eligible. What is it? 20, 2036. 36. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> just checking. You knew. Um, and you know that it's, for some people you go, oh my gosh, she already has those political mm -hmm. ambitions. Why do you, where did that dream come from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And why do you want to be president? That's a great question. I mean, I remember being around 11 years old and I was in class talking very passionately as I do about things I wanted to change in the world. And my teacher said to me, quite jokingly, ha ha ha, you should run for president. And I said, Yes, yes, I should. And so it became this ambition where for me, it means that the hopes that I have for making the world a better place, I have to think more expansively beyond poetry. It's not just writing, it's doing right as well. And if I can do that while changing political institutions, changing the quality of life in my own home country, I think that's a great extension of poetry. You're, you're doing it right now. Uh, this book, Change Things, is, by the way, the prose is beautiful, the Thank pictures you. are amazing. Um, what do you hope people take away from this book? Mm. Uh, it means so much yeah. to see it. This has been like four years in the making, so it means so much. For me, I wanted to write a children's book in which young readers can see themselves as real agents of change within the world. I was speaking with so many family members and guardians who asked me, how do I talk about the world with my child? And I said, first and foremost, by highlighting how important they are to our future. And that's really the core of the message of Change Things. Well, it's just so beautiful. And you wrote this well before the inauguration, oh, yes. well before you were a household name, oh. well before you were on the cover of Vogue. <laughs> Wait, I do think we have the video now. Let's just see your mama, because she's so proud of you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Amanda, absolutely gorgeous. That's my daughter. <laughs> yes, it is. I love that. Amanda, thank you. you make everybody wow. proud. Thank you so much. The book is called Change Sings, and it's out right now. Pick it up. Our girls love it. So yours will too. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> <bad. laughs> the Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> to Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts.
This morning, we're launching our new Today Climate Initiative. We're going to bring you in-depth stories about the challenges we face and the strategies to help solve this crisis, beginning with an eye-opening look at air pollution and how we're all contributing without even realizing it. I went for a ride in one super cool van to check it out. So this is your A-team van. That's right. This is where you get stuff done. This is it. We call this the mobile laboratory. Uh -huh. Essentially, this is a laboratory that allows us to go out and measure air pollution in real time. This state-of-the-art mobile project is led by University of Colorado air researcher Matt Coggin. We're sampling basically anything that could be in urban air, personal care products, cleaning products, paints, basically anything that comes from human sources. So this system here, as we're driving about, we can pull a sample and it fills a can. And then that can, we ship off to Boulder, Colorado, and analyze that. For the last three years, Matt's teamed up with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, known as NOAA, and Caltech scientists to help identify air pollutants caused by everyday household products and even people. What I'm surprised about that we give off these things that affect air pollution. If you look at the label of your of your products, mm -hmm. right, you can see all the different molecules in there. And those molecules are designed to evaporate. When we're applying a fragrance or applying a personal care product, we want to smell good. Mm -hmm. And if you can smell something, it means it's in the air. So are you telling me when I'm putting on deodorant, I'm giving off compounds? You are, yeah, exactly. The project started in New York City and has now gone national, currently in Los Angeles. Okay. Today, we're collecting scientific data. Our first stop, Hollywood. All right, let's go hunting. Right now, we're measuring the breadth of the city. We're kind of getting the whole background of what Los Angeles looks like. You see anything from these guys? Yeah. They really <laughs> awesome. Capturing some personal plumes. Wow, what a spike right there. Yeah. We're filling a canister. In the business, we call that slamming a can. Slam the can, baby. Slam the can. I'm slamming the can. <laughs> the amount of pollutants coming from our daily activities is now as equivalent as what's coming out of our tailpipes. What? The success of the Clean Air Act brought that source down to a level where most cars aren't all that polluting. Emissions captured include the main ingredients for smog, which can trigger health issues in children, the elderly, and people with lung disease, including asthma. Leanne Randolph is chair of the California Air Resources Board. Our focus is the regulatory perspective. Mm -hmm. It's the getting the manufacturers to make them better rather than telling consumers not to use the products. Her group uses this type of data in a continuing effort to clean up air quality in the state. The board recently putting new regulations on four categories of products. Air fresheners, hair care products, personal fragrances, and bug sprays. I'm in, a, in my grocery store, my supermarket, and I'm trying to make choices. What am I looking for on the label? Think about natural products. So using something that is not based off of petroleum, but something that comes from, say, plant-based. A plant-based. We decided to head to an iconic fast food place, and that's when levels went off the chart. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Cooking emissions, all right. Oh my <laughs> Wow. Oh, you can really smell Look it. at this, I mean. Oh yeah, oh, that's intense. When we pull these samples out to start analyzing them back at home, uh -huh. we'll be able to tell, okay, how much of this was cooking emissions, how much came from the people sitting around. This is new to us, this is new science, this is fun. Good morning, today in 30, it's Christina here. Look, I wrote a kid's book. Check out Hoda and Jenna to hear all about it. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready, are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> 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 
Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. All right, let's face it. A lot of us do not have the time or the know-how to bake cakes from scratch. So if you prefer cake mix straight from the box, we're going to show you how to kick those creations up a notch and be the star of your next bake okay, sale. Okay, here's the secret. The secret is to let your imagination run wild oh. with the frosting. So says Christina Tosi. She's the owner of Milk Bar here in New York City. She's got a new children's book. Listen to this. It's called oh. Every Cake Has a Story. I feel like if Kathy Christina. Lee was here, she would say, Every, Every cake, cake has, has a story. story. Hi, Christina. Hi. <laughs> Christina's like, what's happening? How are you? Congrats Hi, on the you new too. book. How are you? Yeah, tell us oh, about it. Thank you so much. I mean, Every Cake. So every cake has a story. Um, the protagonist's name is Sammy. She's this little girl that lives in a town where everything looks the same and everything tastes the same and everyone makes the same cake. And you all know me well enough to know I am all about possibility and creativity and individuality. And I just felt like there needed to be a book out there that told the value of those traits through the lens of this little girl named Sammy. And of course, through a layer cake, the possibility of cake. Yes. You know, that's what I'm here for. Christina, you just had a babe too. And that yeah. babe, that Frankie, Frankie is going to be the luckiest mom, uh, luckiest oh, girl in at, the world. Wait, look at Frankie. Oof. I bet you can't wait to bake with her. She is a little marshmallow, I'm telling you. She loves cake, she loves frosting. She definitely, like, her, you know, like half of her body is made up of cake because I eat so much cake because I'm always thinking about what could be frostings and fillings and crumbs yes. and crunches, but more importantly, frostings because okay. that for me is like where the individuality and personality really takes place well, in how cake. Do, how, how would you jazz that cool? up? Yeah, we, yeah. Want, we want something, I love the can Straight kind. Straight from Don't the box, but how okay. do we make it cool? I have a few tips. 100%. It's all about making it cool, right? So one of the first things that people don't realize is you can take a standard vanilla frosting, cut up some fresh strawberries, right? Haul them, cut them up, throw them into a mixer, paddle it around, and you get this beautiful, chunky frosting. <gasps> it's sweet, it's fresh, it's tart. It can go on a cupcake, it can go on a sheet cake. Now, if you're like less of a strawberry person, but you really like the idea of possibility through frosting, you can take your favorite cookie yes. from the pantry next to your cake mix, yes. put it in a Ziploc oh, bag, baby. take what? your rolling pin, pound it, Oreo. Smush That's it up, like bread, right? Okay, a cookie and cream. Yeah. That and fold it into frosting, Man, right? Look at this, that. cookies and cream, my friends. Yes. Look at this. Give your frosting a little crumb, a little flavor, a little personality. Everything doesn't have to just be chocolate and Chris, vanilla. So you can use anything. Are you all ready for yeah. my favorite frosting use. of the season? Anything. Christina, can I you ask you a question? You ready for anything? Yeah, we're ready for anything. We're ready for anything. 100%. But if you like whipped cream better than frosting, yes. which I do, can you do that same thing but with oh. the whipped cream? 100 percent, Jenna. Take that whipped cream. Yes. Take your favorite cookie. Uh. Crush it down, oh, Ziploc bag. It's a great activity for kids. Fold it in. I love your idea of whipped cream. Christina, mm -hmm. you're ready for this because this could be a whipped cream move or a frosting move. You've got a bowl what full do you know of about donuts. Apple donuts. Donut. Donut. What are you gonna do? We just, y'all, you break the donuts down by hand, right? Boom, boom, boom. Break it down by hand. Yeah. You take that donut crumb. You put it into your frosting. No, you Y'all, no, this is the don't. fall move. At Milk Bar, we make donut frosting, my friends. You ready? We make it. Hit it. Hit it. And then, then the we whip it up into donut <gasps> frosting. We top our oh. latest apple cider donut oh. cake. You can oh. get it at any of our bakeries at milkbarstore.com. Talk about donut every cake has a story, my friends. It is on this okay, fall, donut it. frosting. I better see it in your kitchen or on your front doorstep. Okay. You got it. We Christina, will. We, we and these donuts you. are not oh. just your average donut. No. It's one of the best donuts oh, I've wow. ever had. Try these recipes at home. Head to today.com slash food. Please check out Christina's yes. book. It's called Every Cake Has a Story at today.com slash shop.
Be sure you join us tomorrow. James Gandolfini's son, Michael, he'll tell us what it was like to step into the role that made his late father a household name. And have you gotten the chance to listen to Hoda's new podcast? You need to. Just search for Making Space with Hoda Kotb. It's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Honestly, it's wherever you get your podcasts. It will be the best 45 minutes you ever spend. That is I mean so it. It's nice. so uplifting. Do it, do it, do it. And Bye. then send me a thank you note. Goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll actually send her one. Bye-bye. Hi today all day. Hope you're ready for some laughs. Coming up, we put your favorite celebrities to the test as they take on the six-minute marathon. Plus, we've got some of my personal favorite sit-down interviews from the last few months. So get excited as Today All Day continues right now. Do you know what the six-minute marathon is? I know you're going to ask me a ton of questions, and I'm just going to answer as many of them as I can in six minutes. That is the six-minute marathon in a nutshell. <laughs> Padma Lakshmi, thank you for being here on the Six Minute Marathon. My pleasure. First question, if you could only listen to one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? D'Angelo, Voodoo. Oh, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> All right, what is the strangest gift you've ever received? Somebody gave me a tooth once. A to did you, I'm sorry, did you say a tooth? Okay, there's so many follow-up questions, we may have to spend the whole six minutes on this. <laughs> what? Why? Whose tooth? It was just this guy. He was odd, but he was very artistic. He, um, I think he was playing ball or something, and he either fell or was in the midst of a game, and it, he broke his tooth, and he was like, I saved it for you. And <laughs> So it was an adult tooth. That was my next question. I think it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Where's the tooth now? I don't know. See, I have a million think, questions. I don't think it made it like back from college, if you know what I mean. You know, yeah. I think I was just like, this is too weird. Have you ever been mistaken for another celebrity? And if so, who? Yes, when I was 14 and in the mall, which I thought of as a huge compliment, Apollonia. Remember Apollonia? Apollonia? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I was a teenager, like I said. Um, Gal Gadot, I've also gotten mistaken for. Um, let me see. In the early days when I had a perm in high school, um, uh, Irene Cara, but also, so it has just happened to me recently, but recently it was just Gal Gadot and the New Yorker magazine of all people. I've always dreamed of having my name in the New Yorker, of course, as a writer. They put a picture of me because I chose a cartoon for them. And then they wrote that it was Priyanka Chopra. I'm like, I know all us Indian women look alike, but really? <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it's like, that's a, that's a pretty, like, pretty epic row of like beautiful ladies to be compared to. Yeah, I mean, it's all it's all nice and flattering. Yeah. Oh, that's good. What is your guilty pleasure? I feel no guilt in taking pleasure in life. So I don't feel guilty about anything that gives me pleasure. I think I'm a 50 year old woman. I deserve all the pleasure I can get from now until I die. <laughs> okay, if you could be friends with the movie or TV character, who would it be? Um, well, it's not a character, it's a real person. Um, I would love to be friends with Brianna. Yeah. I just think she'd be so much fun if she let me hang out with her. But, um, and I've never met her and I don't think I want to in a way. I'd hang out with her, but if I just had to meet her, I just think it would burst my bubble. But um, all of my characters are real life characters. Muhammad Ali, Dorothy Parker, Lenny Bruce, Cleopatra, you know. That'd be a good dinner party for you to right? host. Yeah, definitely. What was your least favorite food as a child? Eggplant. <laughs> Do you like it now? I mean, I love it now. I love eggplant. Who have you been starstruck meeting? Mother Teresa. I met her. I got to spend the day with her in the 90s. Um, I cut a ribbon at the World Cup of Cricket that was happening in Calcutta. And um, a group of people said, we're going, would you like to join? I literally tagged along, but she was mesmerizing. She was so 
comforting and charismatic. And you know how you feel when you're like a little kid in the safety and comfort of your mom's arms, all is well within the world. That's how you feel in her presence, at least I did. Do you have a personal mantra? And if so, what is it? It is, um, everything is a benefit if you look at it the right way. Even the most difficult things that have happened to me, I have tried to focus on what I can gain from them or what uh, what is the bright side? What can I gain? You know, what can what can I get out of this? You know, even um, endometriosis, which was very painful and I went through for over 20 years. I like to look at that experience as what gave me the fuel to start the foundation with my surgeon. And so I think it must have been you know, destined for me to go through that because um, otherwise the pain doesn't make sense. It's so unnecessary so that I could turn that pain into power. What did you want to be when you grew up? I, the, my first job that I ever dreamed of being was an airline stewardess. An airline, a flight attendant. We used to call, you know. We I'm call them Joe. stewardesses, I know. We're the same yeah. age. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So I just thought they were the most glamorous people on earth. You know, I flew as an unaccompanied minor when I was four to America from India. And they just, I was on Air India Airlines. They had these beautiful printed silk saris. It was the early 70s, it was beautiful bouffant hair lots of eyeliner and lashes. You know, they were just like walk up and down those aisles with their saris fluttering, you know, behind them. I just thought they have so much freedom. They get to travel all over the world. And that's what I want to do. What do you think you are much better at than you actually are? Oh, I think I'm a better skater. I always think, oh, today is the day that I'm going to seamlessly skate forwards and then backwards. Do you roller skate a lot? Yes, get a pair of roller skates. It's so fun. Do you remember doing it when you were little? Yes, I, we used to go to skate country, go around the ring. Yes, get, I could never skate, skate backwards, but I tried. No, you have to. I will go skate. I'll meet you wherever you want. I know all the flat parts of the city where there's not a lot of traffic. Do not try and skate in Central Park. All right, last question. This is an easy one. What is your favorite reality show? Top Chef. Thank you, Padma Lakshmi. So great to talk to you. This was fun. Nice to talk to you too. See you at the rink. Bye. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What's your quirkiest idiosyncrasy? It's just, I say things that sound like they've been written in a magnet on a refrigerator. But I mean them, you know? Uh, or, you know, I'll say, oh, our fallen. And he's like, where, where, are you from a novel? Like, what do you, you know? Shields, welcome to our very first six minute marathon from home. You're at home, I'm at home, but we're together. We are together always <laughs> in our hearts. Yes. So, oh, here are the rules. I'm going to okay. ask a bunch of questions. 
Answer okay. as many as you can. We only have six minutes. Oh, okay. And I haven't seen any of these questions. I'm getting them same time you are. Here we go. What is one thing you must have to get through the day? My PG Tips tea. It's a tea, it's British. They call it builder's tea because it's like, it's like hardcore, like just easy and they're shaped in a little triangle. And I, I literally, if I don't get it, I'm a little like that. <laughs> If you were gifted a day off from everything, what would you do with those 24 hours? Oh, I would be on on a beautiful beach somewhere with a fabulous book and uh, a bottle of tequila. Oh, can I come with you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, that sounds like my favorite day too. If I knew my kids were fine and my whatever, my whatever work that means right now is fine. And I thought I would, but I think I would just like read all day mm. and you know, and I'd have it. And then I would just sort of sip my tequila and, and I don't know, be peaceful. <laughs> sounds divine. <laughs> what is the best life lesson you could teach your daughters? To have confidence in who they are, listen to their instincts and never be arrogant. How do you teach humility? That's not on the list, but I, I'm asking, because I always I think about it all the time. Humility can be a little bit of a dangerous thing, only because it makes you smaller. Walk into a room humble, it means you're smaller. But if you, you can walk into a room confident as to who you are, but not to be arrogant, meaning not being higher than or better than anybody else. So that's the kind of conversation I try to have. You know, be polite, be, be kind, but arrogance is, we have no room for that. When is the last time you laughed and why? <laughs> we laugh every day. We <laughs> laugh every day and it's usually my husband making fun of me. <laughs> and I, I, it's so funny to me but I, and it doesn't hurt. Uh, I guess not yet. <laughs> it's been 20 <laughs> years, but he makes fun of my little idiosyncrasies and my earnestness of things and so and he brings it back out and then the kids sort of catch, catch up on that and they um and it just makes me belly laugh because i feel com comfortable enough with them and they make fun of me what's your quirkiest idiosyncrasy it's just i say things that sound like they've been written in a magnet on a refrigerator but i mean them you know uh, or you know i'll say oh our fallen and he's like, where, where, are you from a novel? Like, what do you, you know, I don't know. I just say these things like, I think there's something in our midst. And he's like, oh really? Is there something in our midst? I think of them poetically in my head. And then when they come out, they sound a little ridiculous. <laughs> well, you're an actress. You have a flair for the dramatic. I I think so. I mean, I was saying before, my, my little daughter used to say to me, I love you so much. It hurts. It hurts. Kill. And so I was like, that's the kind of, you know, impassioned way I, I speak sometimes and they make fun of me. I love it. I love it. What have you learned during quarantine? That I need fewer uh, social engagements. I need fewer people around. I need less. I really want to stop the noise that I've allowed in my life for decades and the, the revving up and the constant motion and the, yeah, I was just getting ready. It's like doing the hair and the makeup and the thing and the production and the stuff. And it's all such a, it's just anxiety. It's unnecessary. There's so many unnecessary things that as people, I don't want to spend my time doing for this next part of my life. Do you Google yourself? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. My kids have done it every now and then, and there's just too much, and there's too many opinions. Even though it's a Google, it's still an opinion, and it's, I, I can't, I get, I think I would get a little cuckoo with it. I just can't. can't. Uh, I'm right there with it. Do, yes. The next question is, do you read the comments that you post on social media? No, 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 no. And I learned that from my daughters. They were like, Ma, don't read the comments. I was like, oh. <laughs> You know, and my husband will read the comments. He doesn't even have Instagram. And he's like, you know, you're going to get in trouble for doing that or that's happening. That's negative. And I'm like, what idiot reads the comments? 
No way. It's like a road to heartache. Don't read the comments. Uh, oh. That goes for everybody. Okay, this is important if we're going to be best friends. Do you prefer okay. texting or talking on the phone? I prefer talking on the phone. I, I, or at least FaceTime only because if it's a tech, if it's a thing like let's meet at six or let's do this, that's fine on text. But I find things that are necessary to really exchange tone gets changed. And I've seen it with my girls. They only, they're in drama and they just text it. And I, I sat my daughter down and I said, I'm going to read this text to you two ways. As an actress, I read it lovingly as it meant. And then I read it snarkily, like, like emphasizing certain words. And I said, now you don't know which one is the, the in, intention. So I think text is dangerous. That is a really, really good way to explain it. I'm gonna, I'm filing that away for when my kids get a phone in like 40 years. Yeah, cause send them to me. I'll be so weathered and you know, <laughs> I will be so ready at that point. Brooke, our six minutes is up. You did a great job. I knew I Thank talked you. too much. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it so much. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you in person and give you a real hug. Thank you. I look forward to it, Savannah. Blessed to you and your family. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So... It's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. Oh, in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to you today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're gonna do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them, doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What's your go-to song right now? Oh my gosh, The Juice by Lizzo. Ooh. Do you know that one? I don't, how does it go? Ooh, I, you don't want that from me. Oh, but I do. <laughs> Aidy Bryant here for Six Minute Marathon. Do you know how this works? I think I do. Okay, we're gonna answer as many questions as we can in six minutes. Let's start the clock. Woo! Do you make New Year's resolutions? I really don't. I always kind of make like a general one that's like, I hope to have a nice year. <laughs> you know? Hopefully things will be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any irrational fears? I'm really scared of birds. <laughs> really? So scared of all birds. All birds are a particular kind. Um, pretty much all birds. Yeah. yeah. Once we did a sketch where someone had like an owl, like a real owl, oh. in the studio, and I was like, I don't trust him. I don't want him near me. Well, owls are terrifying. Yeah. They would definitely claw you. And he doesn't could. want to be in a studio. No. He wants to kill me. No. Have you ever had a bird like fly into your house by accident? You're from Arizona. So am I. <laughs> oh yeah. This used to happen all the time. Or a lizard. Oh, oh <laughs> like, gosh. I'm t I know. It's really funny. <laughs> The Wild West. Can't handle it. What could you spend all day talking about? Ooh. Oh, probably the real housewives. Oh, really? Yes. Who's your favorite housewife? Wow. 
the toughest question you could absolutely I know. ask okay, me. Let's but how about the favorite city? Which is your favorite? I love New York. You, I mean, okay. it's like, mm, I love Dorinda, all of them. They're pretty great. Yeah, I like it too. I watch for the outfits. What do you watch for? Same, and for the drama. The, I love when they fight about their dogs. I, I, can, <laughs> I could watch it forever. Um, okay, what about a time you failed? What did you Which learn? Which time? No, but what, and it, the follow-up is what did you learn from it? Oh what was gosh. it and what did you learn? Yeah, I mean, there's many different options to think about, but I mean, for me, like, I, I used to do a lot of touring comedy, you know, and those are like, you're going into these spaces where you don't know anyone and it can be really intimidating and then sometimes it doesn't go well and you do a very bad job and no one laughs. And <laughs> in a weird way, I've found that those things have, like, helped me because when, then when I do SNL or something, I'm like, well, this audience is excited to be here. The, it, I don't know. I, I sometimes lean on those failures to be like, I made it through that, and now I, now it's all easy breezy. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. It actually does. It kind of gives you more confidence if totally. you survive that. Yeah. It's a, you can survive SNL. Come on. <laughs> oh, I didn't even plan this, but what has been your favorite SNL sketch character? Oh, my gosh. Also a tough choice. Um, like picking Real Housewives. Yeah, I mean, easy. it's like picking my favorite daughter. Um, <laughs> I guess, I don't know, I love, this is very general, but I love like all the sketches recently that I've done with Kate McKinnon. She's like the best and it's just, it's so fun. We just did an update recently that I, I love, so yeah. You like meat, Colin? Hi. Colin, you a big meat boy, Colin? <laughs> 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 not closer, no. I, I would not say that I'm a big meat boy, but I eat meat. Yeah, I like meat. I think we got a big meat boy. <laughs> There's something about her. I just look at her and I start laughing. Yeah. She just has that effect She's on got people. It. She does. Oh, this is an interesting one. Let's say you're a new addition to the crayon box. Oh. What color would you be and why? Robert Walter sent that one in. Oh, well, <laughs> I feel like maybe a pink of some sort, because I feel like... I'm naturally easily sunburned, <laughs> and um, and I try to keep it keep it bubbly. I guess I don't know. This color would be good for the crayon. Oh box. yeah, I could get into this. It's one a too. limey. It's good. It's your, I hope people can see your your eyes are popping. Oh. Let's talk about Arizona. I'm going off script here. Were yeah. you the kind to like suntan yourself? No, I was because I couldn't get tan. I could yeah. only burn. Me too. I'd have like red stripes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But so now when I go to the dermatologist, though, still they're always like, "Oh, we got to check your freckles and moles." Because I was just in the sun as a kid, always. You know. How often do you go back there? A, lo a lot. Like I'll go at Christmas, and then usually a couple times in the summer if I can. Yeah. So yeah. Do you go back? I do. My yeah. mom still lives there. Oh, the house amazing. I grew up in. Oh my god. How would you describe the heat of Arizona? Phoenix. Um, I mean. Tucson's hot, but Phoenix was, we always made ourselves yeah. feel better that Phoenix was worse. Yeah, I mean, it's just relentless. Like, and I, also my school, like, didn't have a cafeteria, so we ate outside <laughs> year round. And, like, in the winter, it's kind of nice, but in the summer, I just remember, like, eating a, you know, peanut butter sandwich and just, like, sweating. <laughs> you know, what a hell. I know, it, it is, you know. <laughs> What's your favorite 90s jam? Oh my gosh. I love like all Tony Braxton, Unbreak My Heart. Is that 90s or is that early 2000s? We're just gonna call it 90s. Great. If you could witness any event of the past, present, or future, what would it be? Oh my god. I know, that narrowed it down. I mean, maybe I would love to see a female president. So, oh. a future? Yeah. Let's say that. I hope to see that. Okay. If you had to start a side hustle, what oh. would it be? Um, I feel like maybe like interior design. I love that kind of stuff. And I could shop forever. So I'm like, if someone will pay me to shop for them, <laughs> great. That'd be cool. What's your go-to song right now? Oh my gosh, The Juice by Lizzo. Ooh. Do you know that one? I don't, how does it go? Ooh, I, you don't want that from me. <laughs> oh, but I do. <laughs> if you had another career, what would it be? Oh man, I don't know, maybe dog walking? <laughs> do you have dogs? Yeah, I love my dog, Aww. yes. What kind of dog? It's like a terrier poodle mix, What's but not name? in like a cute way, more in oh. like a messed up mutt way. <laughs> he's right, like Buzz. from the mean streets, he's smoking he's, right he now. He has like a weird patch of fur that's black and like he's he's good. he's a mess. <laughs> Many medical problems. <laughs> What's the best advice you've ever received or given? Oh man, um, I think the best advice I w was ever given was early when I started performing and we were like pitching sketch ideas. I used to always sort of start my ideas by being like, Okay, well, this is stupid and it might not work, but I, and I didn't work on it that hard, but here it is. And I had a 
a director say like, you don't have to apologize for anything that you're about to present, just say your idea and know that it's worthy. And I have used that like in so many different aspects of my life where I'm like, yeah, I don't need to apologize for what I'm bringing out, you know? Yeah, get rid of the preamble, yeah, just say it. just say it. All right, I was gonna ask you how do you find balance in your life, but we're out of time, plus do you know how to find balance just in case Hell you did? no. Okay, so forget that question. <laughs> <laughs> Aidy Bryant, thank you. Her new show on Hulu is called Shrill yeah. and SNL on Saturdays. Why not? Live. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, honey. This is so, so fun. fun. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, SG, before we let you go, we, we know you've been limited to where you can go because of the COVID restrictions, obviously. What have you been up to, like, to get through the day? What you been doing? Well, you know, I told you guys the other day that you're allowed to go for a 15-minute walk every day. So one of the things you can do, and I cannot wait to introduce you to this Marvel. It's a convenience <laughs> store. It's called Lawson's. And it is incredible. I think we have some video. Okay, this is, we're just walking. This is right by our hotel, guys. Look at this convenience store. It's amazing. They have, like, literally, look at all that. That's all different kinds of ramen. They sell shirts. They sell every kind of candy, every kind of wasabi peas. There's an entire Hello Kitty section, Hoda, for you. <laughs> I mean, it's just incredible. But here's the other thing that was, like, an absolute incredible find. Right behind me there, mm -hmm. yeah. there are these chicken nuggets that apparently were Anthony Bourdain's favorite chicken nuggets, his favorite wow. thing to eat yeah. in all of Tokyo. I have some right here. And? Okay. These are Anthony Bourdain's chicken nuggets, delicious. He also loves the egg salad sandwich, <laughs> supposed to be great. Another thing, guys, um, this is famous in Tokyo. Oh, it's so Let's sticky. See. What is Rainbow, it? giant rainbow. Uh, cotton candy, oh, wow. which is what you, it's perfect for Instagram. It's made here in Tokyo. You can get some, it's delicious. So you will not be starved here in Tokyo where we've got everything we need. Um, and then of course I had, I told you, you can't go to the gym or anything. Yeah. So I've been telling you that you, you're gonna have to create your own workout. So I then- No, you didn't. <laughs> did, no, you didn't. As promised, no. aerobic, step aerobics. Remember the 90s? They were good to all of us. I did some aerobics in my hotel room. I I'm planning it. on teaching you guys these moves. Okay. So hurry up and get here all right. Go, Jane Fonda, go. Okay, wait. Um, I want to see the set because I feel like we've seen a oh. tight shot of you. Will you show us? Yeah. Well, this is my first day, actually, on our big set okay. that we're going to be on. So, okay, I'm going to give you a tour. I'll just, I'm going to keep, I, this is actually stuck to my hand now. Like, I can't. I'm going to sleep with it. So, 
Over here is where we're going to sit, okay? okay? Isn't it pretty? Now, uh, then, oh, then you can see we're by all the venues. That's beach volleyball over there, yeah. and over there the triathletes are going to be actually, uh, I think, starting tomorrow maybe. Then over here we'll have guests and things like that. We've got these beautiful trees. Look at these gorgeous Japanese lanterns. We have these wind chimes, so beautiful. actually you might hear the little tinkle of wind chimes during our set. Like, I don't think this is ever coming off. And look over there. It's this, a little taste of home, a Statue of Liberty, which was actually oh. given uh, and put up, you know, it's not as big as our Statue of Liberty, but it's pretty big, 20 years ago, uh, to honor the relationship between Japan and France. Oh. So for now, <laughs> I will send it back to wow. you. That's, that's like, hilarious. it's never coming off. Ever. The impression that, that is getting a little delirious? <laughs> yeah, think I think it's happening. A little delirious. Savannah, <laughs> we can, good luck. That's okay, never, got it. Oh, oh great. Good. I'm good. And now she's, yeah. a, she's a smart. <laughs>
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Welcome back. Today on the third hour, New Amsterdam's Ryan Eggold chats with Alan Dillon about the new season of his medical drama. Take a look. We are so excited because we are catching up with one of our favorites here in studio. Ryan Eggold kept us on our toes as Tom Keen on NBC's The Blacklist, where we were never quite sure which side he was on. Well, we do now. We know. We know. Mm -hmm. Ryan is back as Dr. Max Goodwin in the hit show New Amsterdam. This season, some of his employees are readjusting, like a lot of us, to yeah. life in the office after working from home during the pandemic. Sherman, you got huge, all right? I started with the Wiz Team Zoom patients, and 18 months later, New Amsterdam needs an employee gym. New Amsterdam needs an employee gym. 18 months of Zoom appointments is not being kind to me. Melvin, you look great. I gained 20 pounds from snacking between Zooms. Did you know thighs chafe? Uh, Dr. Metzger, are you surprised by all the great changes we've been making lately? No, Dr. Goodwin, this isn't my surprised face. This is my, I can't believe I have to shower every day face. <laughs> we can oh, relate. this is great. Ryan, good morning. Good to see you, morning. my friend. Morning, morning. Good and to see more you. more importantly, in person. Yes, it's so wonderful to be back. I've missed you guys. We have been saying on Zoom, we wish you were here, we wish you were here. Are you actually glad to be here? Yes, okay. I am. And we can't have quite as many technical snafus as we had oh, yes. that yeah, first time, had which was good pretty, times. pretty epic. You know, what's <laughs> great about your show is that it, it, you know, it's of the moment and about the moment. And, yeah. You know, especially taking a look at, at medicine. And, and we've just come out of this pandemic where medical issues were front and center. But there is a lighter side. And, and you guys walk this great line of, of dealing with drama, but also drama dealing with the lighter side of things. Absolutely. That's what this season is about. You know, it's about more joy, as David uh, puts it. And, uh, you know, we all just went through this pandemic, not that it's over, but that it just last year was such a heavy, mm -hmm. difficult year that I think this year, this season at least, is about um, rediscovering those things that we love, that we care about, that make us laugh, that make us smile, finding that joy again that, you know, mm -hmm. we've been missing and, and makes everything worth. So speaking of that, you know. how were you able to find joy in the last two years? Um, oh my gosh, that's, you know, there were a lot of nice things to sort of come out of that difficult situation, like spending a ton of time with my family. Mm -hmm. I hadn't done that in a long time <laughs> and just sit still and like read a book mm -hmm. and not have to be anywhere. Like those were kind of pleasant revelations. I'm trying to take with me as life starts to gather steam again, right. you know? You know, when, when there's a couple, if there's some electricity, you know, you, yeah. everybody loves that, you know, Sam and Diane, all those, those classics, you know, Max and Helen are finally getting together. How do you make sure that, you know, they're, that, that now that you, you're getting together, that we're not like, well, okay, it wasn't what we were. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have no clue. I cross my <laughs> fingers and I hope for the best. Um, no, you know, the thing oh. is, working with Freema, uh, she's such an amazing actress and an amazing person, and there's just a lot of fun moments to find with her and, mm -hmm. and, and in between things. And I think now that they are getting together, there's a whole set of new challenges of like, you know, when you give someone everything they want, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And what's the other side of that look like, you know? And now they have to manage the hospital and having a professional relationship in the workplace. And Home Life Max has a daughter and, you know, she's never been a mother. So there's this co-parenting thing. And there's all these, these great challenges that they have to face now that they've, uh, you know, 
gone there, so to speak. <laughs> As it were. We, we just yeah. saw that steamy scene. I just saw a commercial for New Amsterdam, and it showed, you know, some of the steamy scene. Do you get awkward? So Seeing awkward. Seeing yourself in yeah. that position? Yes, and and do and doing it. Yeah. Like, you know, you're, you're standing on the set and you're like shirtless and half naked and there's a bunch of crew guys around and you're like, hey guys, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> Everybody's just waiting. Does this guy still have his shirt off when we go home? <laughs> you know, uh, so it's tricky, but it's fun. I, Michael Slovis directed the uh -huh. episode. He's amazing. He made us feel really comfortable. And, and like I said, Freeman's the best. So mm -hmm. we just stayed connected and did our thing. You, you just finished uh, doing a movie in Atlanta, a Tyler Perry movie. Yeah. So I'm guessing you're, you're Medea's long lost son. Yes, and, I am. And, and, uh, Tyler's but... passing me the torch. I'm the new Medea. <laughs> it's a bit of a change. Yes, I'm a challenge. Yeah. But you were, you say you were filming right next to Black Panther 2. Yes, yeah. Uh, what was that like? And, and did you, were you able to wrangle a role? I was, yeah. Well, you know, it's amazing <laughs> what Tyler has built down there. He's built yeah. this whole studio and he's got this incredible roster of, of films and TV shows. And uh, yeah, they did have Black Panther shooting there. I did poke my head in and just, if anybody needs like a yeah. thug to just get punched, right? I, I'm here. Volunteer I'm available. Yourself. So we'll yes. see. I'm still waiting on the call, but I'm okay. hopeful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It is so good to see and you. And happy, you happy belated birthday, by thank the way. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And congr congratulations oh, to you. Thank you. It's fantastic. Maybe you could yeah. write her birth into the show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh. Come by anytime. <laughs> yes. That would be an awkward scene. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've done a lot of delivery, uh, deliveries. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm ready You could for have this. your shirt off, deliver. Anyway. Yeah. That's a different kind of show. That's the Completely, That's different, completely different. Completely different. Okay, yeah. season four of New Amsterdam premiering tonight, 10, 9 Central, right here on NBC. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, it's Tuesday, Tuesday, and we need your help picking out some outfits for tomorrow. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. Chuck in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right, I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. Today on Hoda and Jenna, it's Tuesday, Tuesday. And this time, we got a little help from a friend. We're raiding Savannah's closet, and we need your help deciding what we'll wear on air tomorrow. Welcome, guys. It's Tuesday, September 21st. Last day of summer. Is today the last summer? Did you summer? see that harvest moon that was up? Yes. That was crazy. But you know what? But I knew it was a full moon because I woke up howling at 2 in the morning. Did that happen to you? Howling? You know when it's a full moon, I don't sleep as well because you're, I'm, we're all you're, kind of like primitive Yes. Yeah, so wolves. You know, by the way, it was a beautiful, beautiful full moon. Did you see it first thing this that morning? Was, that, yeah. That's your picture? That's my picture. I took it um, looking out, outside because I couldn't believe what I was looking at. And it's World Gratitude Day. So some people may say it, see it as the end of summer. It's actually the beginning of fall. A new season for us to get all of our things together. So since it is World Gratitude Day, let's all think about somebody or someone who we're grateful for. Yes. 
then just think about that. Anyway, here we are listening to this kiss by Faith Hill, who's turning 54 today. Stop. Stop it. Stop it, Faith. Uh, we, you know who we're grateful to is our friend Christine mm -hmm. out in Washington and her furry baby. I love how we have all these fur babies. Yeah, we sure Bubba. do. Bubba is a really cute mm. name for a cat. Mm -hmm. Keep, thank you for watching our show and keep your videos coming to HodaAndJenna.com. Okay, so The Voice is off and running. I cannot believe it's season 21. No. Every time I see Carson, I just cannot believe how the show has I know. just, I mean, this thing is has been on fire for so many seasons and now they've added a new spice. Yes. What is her name? They have name it, named Ariana Grande is yeah. that spice, okay? And she made her, her debut last night. She joined fellow coaches, of course, Kelly Clarkson, yeah. John Legend, Blake Shelton, and a huge opening number. Yeah, this was a mashup of Hold On, oh. I'm Coming, and Respect. Take a look. exist on the planet Earth right Why now. Why are we that talented? We will never be, but I cannot believe those two women sound like that. Aren't that Nothing incredible? against Blake and John. Good no, but for the you. women. They were amazing too, but the oh my. women. Kelly hit that note and I was like, nobody compares. And oh. then she came in, it was amazing. Can I also say like a, when you know you were born in the 90s situation, yeah. when we heard, I didn't see it last night because yeah. I was parenting, yeah. but when you see Hold On, I thought oh. for a minute it was Hold On Wilson Phillips. <gasps> oh, I love that song. Remember Hold oh, On for One More got. Day. Yeah. Things will change, things will go your way, if you hold on. Did that sound good? Wait a minute. Is there I've a heard singer? you sing many times, and that was the best you've ever sounded. Is hold on my number? That might be your note right there. I don't know where it was. I don't think I can There's find it There's something happened. I think you sort of felt it too. Yeah, like you I had sort a, like, of did a jolt. just because your eyes. <gasps> no, because it was real. There that was light was, in there. That was, that was anyway, a Anyway, sorry. I, that was sort of embarrassing. That, that I, I immediately no. went to Wilson Phillips, but I love that I song. I love Wilson Phillips is amazing. By the way, if you guys remember, Respect was the number one yeah. song on the Billboard Top 500. Remember, they did the best songs of yes, all time. Yes, we should have kept that printout because I kind of wanted to make a playlist. <laughs> But we didn't. By the way, someone should make the playlist of all 500. Would y'all do that playlist for us, someone? No. no. All right, well, we have a really special edition of Tuesday, Tuesday. It's really fun to ask a question just to silence. That's yeah. me every night. Okay, we are getting styled. This is a very special edition because we are getting styled by Savannah. Okay, so here's the truth of it. We do a little, a little bit of rating of Savannah's closet. You do maximum rating. I've done it on occasion. I still have her red boots and a few other things that I don't, I'm not even sure she's quite aware of, but yeah. I've taken a few things. However, she went through her own closet and she picked out three outfits. Okay, so, so well, should we see your, your picks? These are mine. Okay. These are from the SG closet. Is that my yellow blazer? No. No, you have one like it. That's, okay. So it's the, it's the yellow blazer with, I think, some black pants and a white tank. That pink floral number in the middle. I've seen her wear that. And yeah. then the wow. blue cheetah jumpsuit. Cheetah. Okay. Okay. I normally don't go towards cheetah every single time in purple or in. blue. You're leaning Well, I just that. think that kind of is spicy. It does have a little Are you extra into it? I like all three. I'd love to see which one gets chosen. Okay. Let's hope they all fit. Okay, uh, now you. <laughs> all right, I think these are mine. A little brown sweater. Oh, with little poofy sleeves. I've worn that before. You have? Um, sure have. By and the way, with that skirt? Nope. The okay. skirt is also some sort of uh, animal print, so if we put those mm -hmm. two together, it will be very that's extra. That's cute. That's very cute, extra. That's cute. Then that pink suit. I think that was the one where she did the the town oh, hall with she Donald did the Trump. town hall I in think that, that suit was it. I don't remember maybe I'm wrong but something big and something big and important happened in that suit oh my gosh I don't think I should wear it what if I spill well it's okay she don't it. care yeah. okay and then this looks like Savannah don't you think that kind of like belted uh -huh. situation yeah 
Um, anyway. Okay, so those are the choices. Head to Instagram. You guys can pick whatever you like, and we'll uh, we'll wear it. All right, so okay. is there something on your shirt? I don't know. I, I don't know what was happening there. Um, anyway, okay, there is a new uh, New York Times article that just featured this this dating site, mm -hmm. which sounds awesome. It sounds awesome. Okay, it's for Jewish singles, and it's called kibitz.com. So here is the twist of this. You know how usually you put your own picture on your own profile? No, no, no. This one is given off to the moms. The moms, the moms make the profiles they for the grown-up children. They arrange, they arrange the, the matches. Match. They can, and through gift cards, they can even pay for the dates. Oh wow, that's real helicopter. <laughs> that really oh, is. I kind of. For the date. By, by the way, if we're paying for our kids' dates. Yeah. But anyway, but that's but I do nice. think it's interesting. Like, who would your mother choose for you? Who would that choice be? I feel like Henry. Yeah. Yeah. She always said she was like, I was like, well, maybe we should. You know, I could date yeah. this person, and she was like a Boy Scout. I see you with the boy. An oh, Eagle she Scout, said that. And that's Henry. Oh, he's an Eagle Scout. Yes. Oh. But I know it's fine. funny. What about your mom? Uh, my mom used to go to like you know the the, the uh, athletic store, uh, Athlete's Foot. She would be like, <laughs> yes. she she used to say, oh, this would be perfect for your brother. Hello, and she would like she'll, so she'd tell my brother about the person that she met at Athlete's Foot, who was really great, and and my you know like she. But Athlete's she, Foot, she would find a girlfriend for him there. Well, yeah, the girl who was helping her. My mom would say, oh, you seem really nice. And she would ask, or she met someone on the train for me. She, I was on Amtrak. Oh, he was so nice. And I said, you should meet my daughter. And so here's his name. I was like, ma? But she, Did you she ever was go like on a, a date? Ranger. I met the one Amtrak guy. It wasn't really a date, but I met him. What about the athlete's foot? Uh, I don't remember if my brother ever met her. Maybe he did. I just love well, it. I haven't thought about athlete's foot in a million foot. years. But she was good. Wherever she met someone who she liked, she would say, she would set up with, or with my sister, like, oh, what a nice young man. I think he'd be great, or what a nice girl. Well, yeah. I love setting people up. I hope I don't bring on this. You've done. You've done some, we don't, we are not going to reveal at this moment who you we set up. We could reveal pretty soon because I think an engagement what? is coming soon. Wait, I'm not what sure. are you talking about? I don't know, but maybe. Wait, someone and we both know and I love. I was told in the Jewish faith that if you set up three people that get married, you go straight to heaven. <gasps> so how many have you set up so far? One. one. Okay, I you're on a roll. More. I just want to go straight there. By the there. way, that one might be an engagement. It is time for Unscripted. Um, earlier, we told you at the top of the show that today is World Gratitude Day. Yeah. So we thought it would be cool for all of us to really think of, some, think of somebody who we want to show our gratitude for, the people who just help yeah. us every day. Everybody think about somebody. Okay, okay let's, let's both think. Ready? Okay. One, okay. two, three. Reka! Reka, Reka, Reka is Reka. up every morning. She is about to head off to maternity leave. She works so hard on our show. <laughs> so we just wanted Miss Reka to show you a little gratitude. Yes. Okay, and so we have your husband <laughs> who's, who's gonna, gonna come walk in, in with, with some, some flowers. flowers. <laughs> oh, how happy are you? <laughs> oh how do you feel, honey? I feel good. I feel really big. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look big. No, you don't. Yeah. And in fact, you haven't missed a beat. You've been waking up I so know. early wow. to be with us. Aren't you so glad you're going to be on maternity leave? I, I'm excited. I'm really excited. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Can you believe you're going to be a mom, Reka? No, it's totally unbelievable, no, actually. We can't wait to meet that babe. Where's and your we're cute husband? He didn't want to be in the picture. He just wants to stand over He's, there. Where, where are he? you? Hi. Oh, oh there he is. Oh, you know what? Look at this little happy family. We can't wait to see a baby meet. We, we love makes you. Makes three. And by the way, we love you more than just on Gratitude Day, yeah. Reka. Every day. We love day. you all the time. So we <laughs> Have a you. good maternity Have leave. A, we love you. Love you. Thank, thank you guys so much. That's so sweet. <laughs> oh. Reka's like never surprised Reka's me again like, like please that. Please <laughs> don't do that to me. By the way, she did not. She was not digging it. But I think it is. I think it's, a, it's funny about Gratitude Day. And sometimes yeah. it does take a day to remind us. It's like. Okay. And it should be every it should second be, but, of the day, but, but it isn't. Sometimes it isn't, but, but it's, it's not. fine. But it should be. No, okay, well, we no, talked about your new podcast. Yeah, we already did that. Okay. So no, anyway. but can't we talk about it for a second? We okay. already talked. It's yeah. called Making Space with Hoda Copy, And if you want to get it, all you have to do is go to that little purple button. And hit it. But here's something else that we're launching at the Today <laughs> Show. It's a Today newsletter. It's called Today Insider. Because if you need more behind-the-scenes <laughs> information... <laughs> but you also 
also get early access to oh, steals what? and deals. People are always like, by the time I get it, Discounts it's over. Discounts and yes. giveaways? Yeah. Okay, it's, well, I'm you signing get, up. You know what it is? Free stuff. Sign up right there at that QR -E code. E stuff. Or you can go to today.com slash insider. All right. Today Talks continues after the break. We have an exclusive chat you can only see here on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Today Talks and our exclusive content you can only see here. I'm laughing a little bit because I had that donut and I, ha and I normally don't eat before 11, so I feel jacked. <laughs> Why are you jacked? It was, do it was donut hole. It was a very sugary hole, and I just want to say, <laughs> it takes me back. <laughs> when you can it make Anthony laugh, back, it's usually pretty good. It takes me back a little bit to my older cousins um, peer pressuring me into doing bad things. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, you said, well, we have to all have a bite of the hole, and then yes. I had a bite, and I said, would you like to try the hole? Well, and you said, no. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. I don't know why. I and said then that. afterwards, a, you I'm said, and how do freak. you feel? Yeah, and I said, now how do you well, feel? Well, I don't feel great. <laughs> well, here's the funny thing. We're both control freaks. And this is, somebody <laughs> told me this exercise. Well, it was actually Maria. She told me this exercise. <laughs> and she said, write down the, um, the traits in someone that aggravate you to the end of the earth, whatever they are, write them down. So I was like, oof, I hate to have a guy control me. Yeah. Telling me what to do. Why don't yes. you rest? I'm like, I'll rest when I'm tired. Yes. Like I have a So weird... when I said, so, why don't you eat? You so, were like, no, no, but wait. <laughs> so that's one of mine. It's also one of yours. You're like, yes. oh, yeah, you need to, what you need to do, you yes. always tell me, book your doctor's appointment <laughs> and then go over there and do your interview, then come back no, and then get rest. you. Well, you do it too. <laughs> well, anyway, they say, when you write down the things that trigger you, yeah. look at your list. Yeah. Of the of the, the emotions that someone that trigger you, and that's you. Wait, what? It's you. I'm a control. But does freak. that mean that you and I are the same person? Yes. And what but that do means I is that's why you, you can't when I say eat a donut. No, but well, kind of. <laughs> but but that's but but that's why they say you can't date someone who's like you because it's like looking at your traits that you realize you don't like. It's what bugs you and everybody else. It's you. Is that crazy? Think about it. It's weird. I was shocked. So when right you said you have to eat a donut, <laughs> and was it what, what? was it until I said no. you should eat a donut that you were like, oh, I'm not well, eating that donut? So, no, I don't. For like some subconsciously, reason, certain people when they tell me what to do, it bugs me. Like I get my yeah. back up. Certain people, yes. I'm like, oh, okay. it doesn't bother me yeah, when you do, tell me what or to you. do. But, when, but what, maybe what if Henry men, told me <laughs> yeah, and something about men saying, like, here's what, hey, why don't you rest, okay? And then somehow I'm like, my back. Yeah, goes because you know up. what it is? It's mansplaining. 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 Nobody likes mansplaining. it. Mansplaining. Honey, honey, <laughs> hey, no, no, what you need. What you need even is this to even relax. this morning I got a can, I had a can <laughs> a can of coffee because my workout was early and I wanted to have a can and so that I didn't Henry have to make say? coffee and Henry goes what is that can Why are you and right it? away I was yeah. like 
But picture, but picture if I had said it to you. What's that can? I would, would have been said, like, oh, you should try this latte. latte. By the way, that's why they say if you meet a man who you would want to be best friends with, like who is like who you love, like a, that's the one you should marry. Which you did. Whoa, 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 whoa. But if I, you meet I, a guy, you're not you, because you're it's over. <laughs> For <laughs> me, but if you're single and you meet someone and you say, "Wow, if that person were a woman, I would want to be friends with her." Yeah, that's the one for you. You see, because sometimes yeah, but I kind of think even the friend is going to mansplain after you've been together for 15 years. I know, but he you sees already a like him like a friend. It's not. It's different. He like, sees a can, <laughs> and he had, didn't see a can there the day before, and he wasn't trying to be rude, but he they're said, never, by the way, they're always trying to be nice. What is that can? And sometimes when they see your back get up, they don't, yeah. what's well, I goes, do? All I said, said was, was what's, what's that, that can? can? I know. Well, anyway, it took me back. Anyway, that's he, that, it. Those were some life lessons you just dropped right we, here. So did you. You dropped some, too. No, no, I think you dropped I it did. just like an apple cider donut. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Bye. Bye. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>
as you say, she steps into this place that has been run forever by old white guys. And in many cases, these are cartoonish old white guys kind of fumbling around, hanging on to their tenure. Could you dig into some personal experience as a woman of color who stepped into these prominent roles and, and roles of leadership and sort of understand what she was going through? Sure. And I'll also I'll try and frame also that hopefully, hopefully no one is a caricature in this piece. So even though you have, you know, older white professors, male professors, one, you know, the brilliant Bob Balaban, who plays uh, Professor uh, Elliot Renz, hopefully you're seeing his perspective on, on the effect of, of being the older generation and perhaps not have paid enough close attention to what the students want and how they need to learn. So I'll just start with that. And then uh, the next part of your question, which is like, do I know what it's like? Um, yeah, yeah, I do. And I, I think that that has got to have informed how I approach, you know, Jian. I, I, I can't exactly specifically point to what, but um, one of the things that I, I feel like I have learned in my career that is a little bit uh, ahead of Professor Kim is um, is that change is slow when you are an individual facing an institution. And for me not to lose heart because for anyone who knows who's tried to enact change, it's never the way that you think it's going to happen. Right. And the challenges are there for you to only get more specific and deeper into your commitment to change. Um, and I, I, you just see Professor Kim just trying to balance all these things at once. Um, and so you have a real good balance of comedy and pathos. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh, shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Dr. Kim's name which as, a, as an Asian woman, you, Asian American woman, you say that was really important that her name was authentically Korean. Can you explain that a little bit? Sure, it's like I can trace, I feel like how Hollywood has progressed or widened. You know, when I was on Grey's Anatomy for 10 years as Christina Yang, it was the Obama years. And uh, specifically, the, the show never addressed people's ethnicity, nor did it really kind of address people's home lives. It just was the style of the show. So I never got to really necessarily explore what other parts of Christina was. And then with uh, the show um, Killing Eve, I was able to bring a certain aspect of Eve's uh, uh, cultural heritage in the third season but that's what the show is not really about that it's the show is really about the exploration of and the discovery of of a, a woman's own psyche but in the chair when i first opened that first page of the pilot and i saw that 
Dr. Kim's name is, is Jiun Kim. Uh, I just noted it in terms of the growth of my own career that now I can, I can play a character who specifically has a Korean name and all the characters are going to call her that name correctly. And I do, it was significant to me. Um, I think uh, there's been a lot of accommodation or denial or just not existence of the fact that people have, um, they're in their names, their ethnicity is, is, is in their names. So it was just great to, it was great to see and it was really important to me. It feels like this fits into something you've been thinking about in your recent roles, which is to give authentic Asian experiences in the in the parts you take and in your performances. Different, as you say, from something like Grey's Anatomy, which just sort of fit into the plot. You can sort of tell more of the story. And I feel like we see that in the chair when she goes home and her father lives with her. And we see symbols of religion on the wall, which you've talked about in your old child, in your own childhood. So what does it mean to you personally to be able to have that power in Hollywood to say, this is how the role is going to be. This is how I'm going to play that. Well, it's definitely not as, let's say cut and dry in that way, because for me, it's more like finding the right collaborators, finding, cause I am, I'm not a writer at this point in my life, you know what I mean? But I'm not, not I never want to, I never want to limit myself, but uh, uh, it's about trying to find the world and, and, and the voices that I am interested in, in uh, inhabiting and collaborating with. So, you know, Amanda set the whole world. This was always going to be a part of it. Uh, Dr. Kim was always going to be taking care of an elderly parent, and she was always going to be taking care of an adoptive daughter. So no matter what, you get to open up a lot of story dynamic with that. And that was also one of the things that really, really interests me. And is there a lot more of that now, Sandra, is just by virtue of all the different outlets that we have for those shows added with a heightened consciousness and awareness that we need more of it? I, I, you know what? I think so. I'm almost afraid to say, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and anyone who's a person of color knows what I'm doing when I'm saying, I don't even want to say that it might be true, but it might be true because there is more openness to it because there is a uh, more interest in it. What I hope develops alongside of it is a certain type of patience and a certain type of support that comes in the form of development. You know, voices have to be developed. Do you know if you suddenly want a, a, a storyline based on X, Y, Z, because it's you seem to think that the public wants it, you need to develop the voices to be able to take on those leadership roles to make that happen. Because ultimately what it depends on is that the storytelling is interesting and authentic and true. You know what I mean? Because you can have whoever you want on camera. It doesn't matter. But if it's not interesting, if it is not truthful, I don't think people will watch it. I think that's probably right. And, and as you talk about bringing your own experience to roles like this, I love reading the story of your own upbringing outside Ottawa, where you really had to convince your parents that performance and acting was the thing for you. You were proven to be very right. Um, but what were those early years like when you said, mom and dad, I know you maybe don't get this, but this is what I want to do. You know, I'm one of those extremely lucky people who have a good relationship with their parents. And what I've learned uh, from that experience uh, and obviously growing and maturing as a person is that adversity is extremely important in the development of a person's character. And the time, you know, my parents are immigrants from South Korea, you know what I mean? And in a very, very, very typical uh, Korean American immigrant kind of upbringing, just very middle of the road typical education and having a good job and security is very important. Anyone who was a child of an immigrant knows this. Um, so my parents, it was very, very foreign, you know, the entertainment world or the artistic world, it was very, very, very foreign to them. But what I am so blessed with is that the way that they were an obstacle to me, it only makes you tougher in a good way. 
I've spoken about this before. It's like, you know, if you have the two most important people telling you that you shouldn't do it or that you can't do it, you, uh, and you still do it anyway, you do it anyway. Um, you have, a, uh, you just built an internal confidence and you can only build that by going through it. So when you are pounding the pavement, when people are saying no, when you have self-doubt, you already have a certain layer of confidence because you've already surpassed, you know, uh, the the doubt of the two most important people to you. I, I was very lucky in my in my in my career so far. You know, in the early days, I had success quite early, yeah. and I was able to show them very full pieces. You know, where the entire film was about my character. I did this film early on by Mina Shum called Double Happiness, and it was about this character named Jade Lee who wants to be an actress, is in a very typical Chinese Canadian home. And it's a very simple coming of age story where she just eventually leaves home to pursue her dreams. When my parents saw that, my mom said to me, is this what you basically wanted to tell us? Mm. And I just felt so seen by her, like she got it. I mean, my parents really eased off the, the gas pedal because I was fortunate enough to be able to show them my work and they could understand that, um, that there's meaning in, in that work. And I think it's a, little, it's a little tricky and hard for immigrant parents, let's just say, to understand that if their child is an artist, uh, just to, to not be afraid even if they fail or even if they're hungry and just eating pizza for three days, if they're, if you see your child that wants to be an artist in some sort of way, just to, just to give them a little space to try it out. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch nightly news kids edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The moment when you win the Golden Globe for Killing Eve, you get up there and they showed on the broadcast, I think before you even got to the microphone, your parents and your dad stands up and breaks into applause and you're doing okay and then you see them, you whew, you could see it sort of wash over you. What was that moment like to see your parents who were skeptical at the outset stand in the back and watch you receive this huge award and to watch their daughter be so successful at what she chose to do? You know, I have been shameless with my parents. I have brought them to so many awards. <laughs> they froze, they really, really froze. But it's profoundly, profoundly satisfying that when you reach a certain type of milestone, and I would say that for me, it was hosting the show, um, that 
uh, your parents who support you so deeply are actually there in the audience. Yeah, it's profoundly um, I, 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 satisfying to be able to come to a certain point in your career when in the moment that you're celebrated, that your parents get to witness it. I mean, you should ask them what they thought. <laughs> I honestly, it's, it was, it's such a blur, you know, it's such a blur, but it was also um, really important to me to be able to publicly thank them, you know, and, and, you know, you don't, you, you, I, I mean, I'm honestly just doing it in, in the moment because my parents are there, but, but um, subsequently I, I just re I, I, it was reflected back to me that, I think that it meant a lot to uh, a lot of child children of immigrants mm. and a lot of uh, Asian American kids and just people uh, to be able to express gratitude and love to their parents publicly. I don't think I have to ask them. I saw their faces that night. <laughs> I think they were pretty proud. I think they were pretty proud. So you talked about that early success in Canada and then you make the leap over to American television, and you mentioned Arliss. I think most people point to Sideways as the breakout moment for you. Did it feel that way in real time when everyone said, oh, who's she? I like her, let's put her in more stuff. <laughs> you know, I think it was actually a timing thing because um, Sideways and Grey's Anatomy happened at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So those are those, uh, you know, just mysterious times of like, you know, uh, the stars are aligned. And I think that did happen. And, you know, working on Sideways was one of the highlights of my career. It's just, I, it, I think it still holds up. It's Definitely. been like a while now, but I, I think it still holds up. So that kind of like one, two punch of like Sideways and then Grey's Anatomy, it was uh, uh, it was a, a, a real <laughs> a real shot out of the cannon. Um, but I, but I also am, am so happy that, you know, it happened in my early thirties. So I already had a, a, a career behind me and a, and a fairly good amount of grounding to be able to uh, receive uh, what that meant to suddenly come into people's consciousness. And it kind of felt like it seems that with that sideways success, you said to yourself, I don't have to do the, girlfriendy sidekicky thing i can be front and center be a central character when you make those certain like leaps in your career you change the point of view of what you're going to accept mm -hmm. um and for me it was not like it was not in the terms of i don't want to be xyz right it was very much like I only want to play um, dynamic characters. I only want to play things that inspire me. And that's, that's always a really challenging time to be able to move your career into a place of inspiration as opposed to of necessity. So mm -hmm. I was very lucky to be able to decide and start practicing that. And that's, that's definitely when Grey's Anatomy came along. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. 
The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. So Grey's Anatomy comes along. You talk about being shot out of a cannon. There's no bigger cannon to be shot out of in terms of a show that was right in the cultural zeitgeist that people were talking about the morning after all the time. What was it like in your life to be thrust onto that show, to have this big role on the biggest show on TV, to have more and more people interested in your life, to know who you are, to say hello to you on the street? How did it change your life? Well, that's a big question. <laughs> big question. And uh, I don't think that, I mean, I'm guessing that to be perfectly honest, it was traumatic. Hmm. <laughs> it's traumatic. And the reason why I'm saying that is uh, I don't know whether it's just I come from a different generation or my temperament as an artist is that you know that the best work or the work that you or, or the circumstances you need to do your work is with a lot of privacy. Hmm. Um, and that's and that's just to find the authentic self. And so when one loses one's anonymity, you have to build skills uh, to still try and be real. Um, so I know this is probably not an answer that people are particularly interested in, but it is a truthful one. But having been in it, I've I've grown to adapt and I've grown, it really forces you to, to grow internally for at least for me internally to be able to, I, I mean, I went from uh, not being able to go out or not being able to go like hiding in restaurants or never looking out to then being able to receive and manage um, and manage projection, manage attention, uh, manage expectation while not losing the sense of self. And that takes a little while to figure out. How do you do it though? How do you do it when all the eyeballs in the restaurant are on you? How do you say, okay, this is my life. It's not normal, but it's my life. Here's how I'm going to manage it. How did you make those adjustments? Because I've heard the same from other actors who've been shot out of a cannon on a big show or a big movie. And all of a sudden their life like that, the weekend the movie comes out is totally different. Mm. Um, well, have a good therapist. <laughs> I'm not joking. Important. Yeah. No, I'm not joking. It's very, very important because there's a lot that one would need to talk about that you should not talk about with your partner or friends or family. You don't burden them with that. It's a very specific road. And so one, have a good therapist. Hopefully you have a good support system as a support network. You know, I am very lucky that I do have a very great support system. Um, and you just have to work at finding your way to stay grounded. And a lot of times that's by saying no. Hmm. You've done well with it, certainly. And from the, the question that always comes up when someone leaves a show like that is, okay, what do you do from there? What next? And here comes Killing Eve and you have this other great success where, as I said, you win another Golden Globe Award. Uh, what was it about that part that so attracted you and what makes that show so popular? People are so obsessed with it. <laughs> no, I, I can tell you definitely what intrigued me um, was Phoebe Waller-Bridge's tone. Yeah. Because I had not seen it before. And I knew it was fresh. Like, I really knew it was fresh right off the page. And I knew I could, I knew I could follow it. I like the circumstance where, you know, it's this kind of very middle of the road, middle of her life woman and every woman who then develops an extremely dangerous and obsessive relationship with a, with an assassin. Like those are crazy circumstances. <laughs> but what I could also see in the piece, which I was very interested in exploring that it's about a woman's self discovery. And that was ultimately what was so intriguing. And, and hopefully that element as well as um, a type of very um, exciting uh, push and pull relationship between Eve and Villanelle is exciting to people. 
uh, but mostly it's, I, I hope it is, is that you see these two women trying to figure out themselves by somehow needing to be in relationship with each other. And that was really interesting. That was really, really interesting to me. Like how, how do you figure out how to be in relationship with a character that wants to kill you? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a big question. <laughs> That's a big question. Well, part of the fun of the show is that you have a different woman writing every season. So can you give us a little look ahead to season four of what your fans might expect? Well, I honestly, I am just in the middle. I'm here in London, just in the middle of shooting the, the season four, the last season of Killing Eve. And I can tell you nothing. I knew it. Except. Oh, I thought I might break you, Sandra. <laughs> Except that, you know, we're really, really working hard to try and like really honor that relationship and, and, and to find out what their, how their story not ends, but somehow, somehow finishes at, at this moment. You know, um, that's what we're really working hard on, trying to find that 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 way to to service all those characters beautifully. Very diplomatic answer. It felt like you were giving something, and you really weren't. You were such a pro, such a pro, <laughs> Sandra. I really appreciate your time. Congratulations on the chair. It's so fun to talk to you. I know you're busy working, so thanks for taking the time. Thank you so much. I need you to make this even smaller because could you eat this in one bite? I guess you could eat some of it. How do you like uncooked broccoli? <laughs> Everybody and welcome to Dylan Dishes, Cooking with Cal. So a few years ago, I started posting about my son Calvin's meals when he started eating real food. What's for dinner? Blah. My food philosophy is pretty simple. He usually eats whatever I eat. And since those first few videos, Calvin has transformed from my best taste tester to my favorite little sous chef. <laughs> and the response has been overwhelming. I love sharing my family's favorite recipes with you, but I often get a lot of questions about certain ingredients, what kind of swaps you can make, and how I actually helped Cal get more confident in the kitchen. And now, I can't wait to take a look back at some of my favorite Cooking with Cal segments and offer just a few of those tips and tricks that didn't quite make it into the original episode. So today is all about ways Cal and I are living on the veg. That's right, we're checking out some of my favorite recipes recipes that go heavy on the good stuff. So to be honest, it's not always easy to get kids to go green. Sometimes the simplest solution for a picky eater is to just sneak in those veggies wherever you can. Cal absolutely loves these two veggie packed recipes. We're making zucchini bread and broccoli and chickpea pasta. Up first is zucchini bread. So for this recipe, you'll need zucchini, of course, eggs, applesauce, vegetable oil, sugar, vanilla, flour, cinnamon, baking soda, and of course, chocolate chips. Take a look. Zucchini makes it healthy. Zucchini does make it healthy. Mm. Do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Can you cut off the end of the zucchini? Now we have to shred the zucchini. I don't really like this part. <laughs> Should you just chop these up for Oliver? Yeah. Wanna put the eggs in? Yeah. Put it in that bowl. Before it, I thought I crack it. I'm into the French part. <laughs> Wanna help me beat them? Yeah. I can help you beat them up. <laughs> So let's add the oil and the sugar. Remember to make it a little healthier, we're gonna add some applesauce instead of all oil, right? Yeah. So you put that in. I just pour it carefully. I just do it everywhere. And now let's add some sugar. Is that any sugar? Oh, I like that sugar. You do? Yeah. We need two cups of sugar. Wait, we need a 
them up, right? Mm -hmm. What's this? Vanilla. Come on. Push that all in. So all the zucchini is going to make this nice and moist. I'm just getting the sugar off the counter and eating it. <laughs> now we need some flour. It's gonna be delicious. A lot of flour. A lot of flour, because we're making two cakes. Two cakes? Two zucchini breads. Mm, what? That's cinnamon. Cinnamon. One, two. Just enough. A teaspoon of baking soda. What baking soda do we need? It's a good question. I don't know. I don't know what the difference between baking soda and baking powder is. Okay, now mix that all together, carefully. I turned it on, Mommy. Thank you. That's for Oliver, right? You carefully, careful. Okay, now we're gonna add the dry to the wet. You're doing really good. <laughs> so are you. Ready? Mmm. Mmm. Yummy, it looks yummy. It does, right? I did, I did, I just want it not cooked. You want it not cooked? No. All right. This is actually gonna take a long time. I'm gonna set the timer for 70 minutes. And now we wait. I want it, I want it like one minute. Yeah, yeah. Mm. What do you think? Yum, yum. And guess what? Yeah. Ollie gets zucchini too. <laughs> Best friend ever. So I told you I love to make the most of my time in the kitchen. So I'm gonna show you how I make that zucchini for Ollie. And really I would make this with any of the vegetables I was cooking with that night for dinner. Zucchini, carrots, sweet potatoes. I always just save a little bit to the side, steam it and then blend it. So the good thing about steaming is you really don't have to spend a lot of time cutting. You just kind of chop off the ends. You know, you can go just really really thick with the chops. As long as they're even, they'll, they'll kind of steam at the same time. So as long as you have your steamed vegetables, you kind of throw them in a food processor. There is a little bit of water in here, which depending on what vegetable you're using, you want that water. Zucchini tends to get pretty watery, so I'm gonna just leave out the water for the zucchini. And my biggest trick, which I find, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, I love to season the vegetables. I know you're not supposed to give them too much sugar or too much salt when they're little, but it tastes better. I don't wanna eat it when it doesn't have salt and pepper in it. So I actually go pretty good with the salt and pepper, just like as if I was cooking it for myself. And if I'm feeling fancy, I'll add a little garlic powder, just because, again, it just adds more flavor. Puree this up. Give it a stir. Now, different stages of baby food, you know, when Ollie first started eating, I would puree it as much as possible so there were no chunks at all. The older he got, I'd leave more and more chunks, um, and now he just eats the zucchini as it is. So, depending on how you want it, this would actually be fine for him right now. It's just so easy to give this to them. And sometimes if they don't like just the straight up zucchini, I'd add in an apple. I'd steam the zucchini with an apple so it adds a little sweetness to it. Um, I'd still salt and pepper, but I probably wouldn't use the garlic powder. And it's easy baby food. All right, stick around because after the break, I'm going to show you my broccoli and chickpea pasta. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. 
Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Dylan Dishes, Cooking with Cal. In this episode, we are living on the veg, and up next, an easy pasta recipe that's great for lunch or dinner. Plus, you get some extra plant protein with the chickpeas. To make this dish, you're gonna need broccoli, chickpeas, pasta, olive oil, lemon juice, garlic, Parmesan cheese, salt, and pepper. So here's what I need you to do. Mm -hmm. You see these little broccolis? Mm -hmm. Can you start breaking that apart? These are all small enough, right? Yeah. Yeah, I just break it. Okay, so you don't like raw broccoli, right? No. So we gotta cook it. I'm gonna put these in boiling water. <laughs> nice. So let's add some olive oil. Let's put the lemon in. Do it. Do a little salt and pepper. Oh. I'm sure then you're See, I'm the pepper. So tell people do salt? Yeah. Sure people do pepper? No, I need to. Now we're gonna set this here. Before we slice the garlic, we're going to put the pasta in the water. I wanna eat raw pasta. I just want it. Oh, it's too hard. Look how hard it is. You remember what to do? Oh, you do. Good job. Just enough to get the skin off. I did it. Awesome. I think my know. It's really short. When they're raw, they're spicy, but we're gonna cook them. Did you put your finger in your mouth? Yeah. What did I tell you? Can you wash my hands so they don't be spicy? Yes, as soon as we're done with this, okay? We're gonna add some cheese. Ooh, we gotta shred some cheese. Okay. Oh, we need a whole cup of grated cheese. I can take forever. <laughs> it's <good>. Like tonight? <laughs> I hope it's done in time for dinner. Now I'm sweating. I hate grating cheese. I mean, I don't like grating cheese. Uh, um, it's the bad one. I know, I'm sorry. I think we're done. And more oil. Sprinkle it all over. I like this one. Is it hot? I'm gonna blow it for you. Yummy, yummy. Good job, bud. 
So a lot of you ask if Calvin really loves vegetables. Um, he does. Obviously, some more than others. Broccoli is a home run. Carrots are always good to go. Zucchini, bell peppers, not so much. So I love to also hide veggies where I can. And anytime I'm using anything with ground beef, ground turkey for, say, tacos or, you know, like a meat sauce, it's so easy to hide it because not only is it all mixed in with the beef, you're also pouring a sauce or taco seasoning on it, so they can't really tell the difference between the beef and the veggies. So because of that, the smaller you dice the veggies, the better. Calvin will just eat this kind of all mixed together. I don't know if I got him fooled or he's just like, whatever, it's mixed in, it's fine. Ollie will actually sit and pick out every single vegetable. So that's why I like to make it nice and small so that he can't do that. I find zucchini is easy to add. Carrots are easy to add. They add a nice sweetness too that the kids like. Um, bell peppers, again, it depends on what you're making. I think it's easy to hide it in a red sauce. I always use onion just because it's the same reason I use salt and pepper. It just adds a lot more flavor. You kind of mix this all around, make a mess, mix it all around. And one of the sneaky ways I also just present vegetables on their plate is to put it with something they love. So of course, something like mac and cheese. I find mac and cheese, pastas, sauces, tacos, quesadillas, it's all just ways to hide the veggies because let's be honest, they're kids and they're not always going to eat them and sometimes you're just gonna have to hide them. For all these recipes, go to today.com slash Dylan Dishes. And I dropped the noodles, my bad. Five second rule, but just to be safe, I'm gonna put them in the dishwasher. But I mean, other times, if I was on national television, I'd still go by the five second rule. I'm Matthew Smith, and this is Kids in the Kitchen. When I really started cooking was when I was seven years old. That's when I really got into the love of cooking. My family's Vietnamese heritage definitely influences my um, cooking style. My Bao Wai uses some specific ingredients that I still use to this day. I've kind of looked into those ingredients from starting to see things on the internet and starting to kind of be like, oh, lemongrass, for example, is actually used in Vietnamese cooking. And then from there, digging a little deeper, I actually learned, oh, that was the ingredient that my grandma might have had used in one of her recipes. I didn't really have an exact game plan, but I just like kind of loved the experience. I think that the best thing that I learned from participating on the show was not something that I realized immediately. It's actually something that I've come to realize over the years is that food has so many memories behind it because when I think about it, I don't remember every single dish I made. I don't remember if I finished it in the correct time period. I don't even remember if the judges liked it or not. What I remember are those 23 other kids on the show who were just such a blast and the memories and going out to eat with them and living the life in LA. That's what I remember the most. At the start of this pandemic, um, I had a lot of time off from remote learning, so I decided to cook for 100 days straight. You know, first it was Italy, then it was Asia, then it was a good dessert route. But my dad did remember it as 100 days of cleaning. I'm still 11 years old, so some of my favorite hobbies, I think, are definitely playing the piano. I love playing downstairs ninja, gotta like boom, 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 boom. I think my favorite equipment is probably just the rings because you could just kind of climb on them and I love reading, you know? So my advice for adults who are not great cooks is try to just see the other joys of it because cooking isn't just about making the food. So just find a part of that that you like to enjoy the process as you go along with it. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, I'm going to be making my Bellwai inspired crispy chicken ramen bowl with soy sauce eggs. I love this dish because it reminds me of Bellwai because of all the Vietnamese flavors. I'm here at my ramen noodle station. I'm gonna be needing 120 grams of bread flour. I'm also gonna need um, 60 milliliters of warm water, and this is so we can uh, dissolve um, our teaspoon of baked baking soda. And finally, we're just gonna need a pinch of salt to give a depth of flavor. I'm gonna dissolve my teaspoon 
teaspoon of baked baking soda. So now in order to get this all incorporated into our bread flour, um, I'm just gonna kind of make a small well here, similar to how I would do for uh, pasta. I'm just gonna add in my water mixture. For our depth of flavor, just kind of making our taste buds think a little more, we're gonna be adding in um, our pinch of salt. As you can really see here, our dough is really starting to form. And now I feel like this is all kids' favorite part about cooking, but I'm gonna ditch the fork and I'm gonna get in there with my hands, just kind of starting to add some over since it's very gluey still. We're just kind of starting to add flour and then majestically we're gonna really get a dough out of here. And for kneading, there's really two different ways. I kind of like to use the ball of my hand and start kind of like kneading it this way, but you can also put it back upon itself, which creates more layers and spreads the moisture throughout. I'm gonna take my rolling pin and we're now gonna start rolling this out into a little square. To spread more of that more uh, moisture and all, we're gonna cover it with the saran wrap and rest it for about an hour. If you wanna do it overnight, you can just refrigerate it and take it out in the morning. So now we're gonna be getting started at our chicken station to make our crispy chicken, the star of the show. But um, for this, you're just gonna need two um, skin, um, skin on chicken thighs, as well as some coarse kosher sea salt and some grapeseed oil. So now it's time to score our chicken. Um, this is just by kind of making small cuts within the skin and not the actual poultry. This is gonna ensure that we get a really nice crispy chicken breast. And it will, will also make sure it crackles up. Now using my other hand, I'm just gonna salt it, making sure to get into all of those uh, cracks as well. I have some grapeseed oil, which is perfect for cooking at high temperatures. So I'm now just gonna add in our chicken breasts that we made, uh, chicken thighs, my bad. And we're gonna put them skin down and let them cook for about seven to 10 minutes. And you wanna cook it to an internal temperature of 165 degrees. It says that it is an internal temperature of 100 and 66, so I think we did our job, everybody. So now I'm just gonna put this out onto a plate. We're gonna let that rest over there. So we don't wanna get rid of all of that goodness on the bottom of the pot just yet, because that's gonna be the base for our broth. I will definitely say while making this, there's a lot of influence from my uh, Bawai's cooking this dish more, such as the ginger. It was something she'd use very often. It's so small when it's roasted. It just gives that magical and kind of like pop acidic flavor in the back of your throat. So kind of working all throughout the mouth. So now to this pot of chicken goodness, I have uh, my shiitake mushrooms, about a fourth to a half a cup. And to that, I'm gonna add in my sliced ginger. To release that ginger flavor, I really find that by cooking it over low heat um, and by slicing it, it really releases the flavor even more. And now we're gonna add in the minced ginger since it's we just want it to disintegrate, but we don't want it to burn. You know when this is ready, and I find it's just because you can really smell that ginger coming alive and stuff. So, that's how I know this is all ready and the mushrooms are a little wilted. I'm gonna add in my chicken stock. So now I'm gonna add in um, my small star anise. I feel like this um, leaves a hint of almost like a pho flavor, which has this very odd um, kind of smell to it, almost majestical if you were to have like a magic castle. But I'm also gonna add in some dried lemongrass. It doesn't have the acidity of fresh lemongrass, but it does give a really nice lemon flavor. So now we're gonna bring this mixture up to a boil and then we're gonna simmer it for 10 minutes to really let the flavors meld together before adding on almost another layer of seasonings. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. 
We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> <bad thing>. <laughs> the Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you what you must know. The biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. In order to accomplish these uh, soy sauce eggs, you're gonna need some eggs, sesame oil, some marin, as well as um, a good amount of soy sauce. The first thing you want to do is bring your salted water to a boil. We're gonna immediately add our eggs, and then you're gonna cook this for six and a half minutes. So now that my eggs are done cooking, I'm gonna put them in an ice bath. I'm gonna get started making the marinade. I'm gonna add in my two tablespoons of soy sauce. And then again, for that little bit of uh, stickiness slash sweetness, we're gonna add in our marin, about, two, uh, about a tablespoon or so, and then a bowl turn or a tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. It's time to peel um, our soft boiled eggs. Now we're gonna let our little babies rest. So now we are at our noodle station and we're here to continue preparing our dough. So um, I'm gonna get started rolling it by hand. Um, this is a lot more fun, um, but can also get a little messy too. And I'm just gonna put that on a well floured surface using some bread flour as well. We're gonna go once, go twice, and then we're gonna start making cuts throughout. One and then we're gonna take it apart and you got a noodle. For the thickness, there's not like an exact thickness, but not as big as you would cut fettuccine, which is a little wider, but not as small as spaghetti. It, a lot of it's also trial and error, if I'm honest with you, but that's my favorite part about being a home cook. We're gonna cook these for four to five minutes so we get those tender springy noodles or otherwise known as al dante. Now that our noodles are cooking, we are getting started um, to finish our broth. So now we're gonna add in that second layer of flavor. So to kind of help that lemongrass out a bit, we have two teaspoons of lemon juice, a little bit of soy sauce. I'm gonna add in some marin, a Japanese wine. Um, also some rice wine vinegar, and then a pinch of salt for again that depth of flavor. Some black pepper for a little bit of bitterness. That's all ready, and let's go check on our noodles. Those are nice and tender, so I'm just gonna scoop some out into a bowl. 
it's time to go head over to our bra station. So now we're gonna bring our noodles over and we're gonna add some of our delicious broth. This reminds me of my bao wai or my grandma's pho. Like I said earlier, although I love just when I'm with the food, I also love when I'm with my bao wai or my grandma. Hello, bao wai. I'm so excited to garnish one of my favorite dishes, but also be with my favorite person. Um, but I, I just want to kind of cut it around the bone, um, and so I'm gonna probably cut it into three pieces. We got our scallions now, Bawai. I'm now also gonna add in my soy sauce eggs, and now we're just gonna cut it, Bawai, too. And wow, look at that runny egg yolk, Bawai. Isn't that just so satisfying? Now, Bawai, um, we're gonna get started placing our chicken. And I'll add in both of my eggs, topping it with some black sesame seeds for a little pop. We're just gonna garnish with these um, spring onions. All right, Bawai, here's the final product. And here it is. How do you think it looks, Bawai? Good? Nice. Mm, so good. But why do you like this dish? Yes, I love it. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. But <laughs> thank you. Well, I mean, thank you for teaching, like just kind of being the inspiration to discovering my Asian heritage and making me so proud of that. So now we're gonna continue digging in. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe as much as I did, and thank you again for joining me. The new series, Dr. Death, tells a true story of a neurosurgeon named Christopher Dunch who paralyzed and even killed some of his patients. Joshua Jackson takes on the chilling role. Now, in the program, he's just started at a new hospital in Dallas and is about to perform spinal surgery. But when he meets Dr. Kirby, played by Christian Slater, things don't exactly start off on the right foot. Yeah, what passes for neurosurgery down here is a sham. I'm here to nuke this place into the future. Wow. Well, you impress me. Usually it takes surgeons at least a good decade to refine their God complex. <laughs> Christopher D. Dunch, MD, PhD. Randy, so do they have to enlarge the door to get your northern head into the building? I'm from Tennessee. North of Texas is north. Ah! <laughs> Joshua and Christian join us this morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. We're happy to have you. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks Good morning. for having us. Josh, let's start with you because this, this show, it, it's, it's so terrifying, especially knowing it's based on a true story. Have you heard about this story before you took on the role? No, the first conversation that I had about this story was with Patrick McManus, the, the showrunner, executive producer, and he gave me the, the broad overview, but what he really said was, you need to go listen to the podcast, because mm. there's an amazing podcast uh, around this story, and then once you listen to that, come back and, and talk to me. And it is, you're right, it's an absolutely chilling, terrifying story, and this man, Christopher Dunch, is a, I mean, he's an outlier, but a, just a fascinatingly evil human being mm. and, and even more so because these are both real folks that you're portraying and christian you actually uh were able to speak with dr kirby the guy you pr portray and we're supposed to spend a little time with him but that got canceled because of the pandemic correct yeah i was gonna fly to dallas uh, we were all set to to start shooting the show and i was gonna spend the weekend with him and his family and uh Unfortunately, COVID hit, so I wasn't able to do that. I did meet him recently at the Tribeca Film Festival, and he was, uh, you know, lovely, very passionate, passionate guy. And uh, you really have to look at Dr. Kirby and Dr. Henderson as two heroes who are willing mm -hmm. to put their careers on the line to stop somebody from doing something that's just so heinous. Insane. And speaking of the pandemic, I know you filmed uh, the, smack, the show Smack in the Middle of COVID. And Josh, you say it actually added to the show. What did you mean by that? Mm. I think the the sense of dread, frankly, mm. that we were all during the I mean, we were right in the in the teeth of it through the fall and winter. And I think that added to the sense of of uh, claustrophobia and discomfort that you see on screen. 
Hmm. Makes sense. And Christian, uh, you mentioned that Dr. Henderson is actually played by Alec Baldwin. So a lot of your scenes were shot with him. What was it like between you two on set? I, I'd imagine there's some levity behind, you know, a really dark story. <laughs> no, <vegetarian>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, no, look, Alec Baldwin, you know, we all know and, and love Alec Baldwin. And uh, to get the opportunity to spend so much time with him was uh was a great experience. Most of the levity came from the surgical scenes because, um, you know, as, as much research as we did, I have a brother-in-law who's a vascular surgeon, so I was able to go to Baltimore and see him actually perform in the operating theater. But uh, when it came down to it, uh, my skills are, I'm, I'm so inept in, in sur the surgery that, uh, that that was quite hilarious. <laughs> hey, Josh, I noticed you uh, quaffing a yeah. little liquid out of that new mug that says, Dad, you and your wife welcoming a baby girl last year. Yeah. How, how is fatherhood doing? It's amazing. I, if I had known how wonderful it is, I would have done it sooner. <laughs> I was just saying the same thing with Carson. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. And just so you know, Josh, I long to sit in one of those chairs on your shirt. I'm like, wherever that is, that's where I want to be. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to you today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Cecily Strong has been coming to us live from New York for nine seasons on SNL. And now her latest project will have you laughing, have you crying, maybe even have you singing. And it will have songs stuck in your head till the next morning. I can relate. We're talking about her new Apple TV Plus show. It's called Schmigadoon. And Cecily plays a doctor who goes on a hiking trip with her boyfriend to reinvigorate their relationship when they stumble upon a town living in the 1940s musical. For me, that would be awesome. For others, maybe a nightmare. Take a look. It out, so yeah, we've been sleeping it. on the ground for days, so why would we pass up an actual bed? That settles it then. Carson, run down to the inn and tell Harvey we have two very special guests checking in. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. So, what an unusual and exotic couple the two you make. No wedding rings, I see. Oh, no, we're not married. Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely, Definitely not. Cecily, <laughs> welcome. Schmigadoon is a fun, brilliant concept. It's hilarious. I mean, I, you know when you see something, you're like, that is so funny. How come no one thought of that? But that is brilliant. Whose brainchild was this? That is all Cinco Paul, who is just the most wonderful, sweetest, funniest man. Um, and he thought of this, I think, like 25 years ago, and he wrote this, and he's our showrunner, and there's a lot of his heart and some of his actual relationship with his wife in this show. Cecily, when they start to break into <laughs> these full-on dance and singing numbers, did you crack up? Did you sing along? Are you like a musical theater child? What, what was it for you? Yes, I think it's like I'm even just watching the clip now and just going, <laughs> smiling dumbstruck again and that's really how I was the entire time it was just you know some days we'd go in and then all of a sudden the, the core dancers would come in and be like oh my god that guy's doing 16 flips in front of us it's 8 a.m 
they're, they're incredible. <laughs> did, did you ever think of was like was Broadway a dream of yours when you were a little girl? Definitely when I was younger, and then um, then you get slightly more realistic. I don't know. I ended up on SNL, so. <laughs> I have, that's a little kid dream too. Yeah. But uh, I, yeah, I always loved musicals. My uncle is uh, Ed Strong is a producer in the city in New York, so I got to see a lot of Broadway musicals growing up. I think my first was Secret Garden, oh. and um, my mom had made um, like a poster for me when I got home from that trip, and she took the playbill and some pictures, and oh. so on my wall in my room it said Cecily on Broadway. Oh my gosh, oh, that's sweet. really that's so yeah, sweet. Okay, very sh sweet. can we just ask about the title Schmigadoon? I yeah. get that it's the name of the town, but who, like, what does it mean? Describe Schmigadoon. Well, because you know the the schma is a you know Yiddish. <laughs> that's it makes everything funny. So it's a, that's his play and on the Brigadoon. Dune, and what about Brigadoon the... is a musical with a similar mm -hmm. opening. Dune. Brigadoon. Oh, that was great. And the, the songs are, I mean, they, they are sung as if they are full on serious musicals from Broadway, but they're full of an edge and some funny bits. Were y'all just cracking up half the time in, in the middle oh, of it? Definitely. And I mean, especially for musical theater people, I think they'll they'll get a lot of extra jokes, but there's plenty for everybody. But certainly if you are a fan or into musicals, you'll get that. I mean, I laugh all the time that when they sing about corn pudding. You know? <laughs> pudding song got stuck in my head. I was singing about corn pudding this morning, so I want to just thank you and everybody. Well, you got all <laughs> and, that. and Cecily, you got a great cast. We're just going to shout out Kristen Chenoweth, Alan Cumming, uh, um, Jane Kurkowski, yes, Keegan Michael Martin Key. Martin Shorter. Yeah, How did y'all do it? I, yeah. Well, I don't, I, you know, unfortunately, because Broadway was shut down, we got a lot of these people that maybe we wouldn't have. Um, but it was just, it was so exciting when I got to watch them sing or perform and Kristen is so funny and in every best. line she made into somehow like a quotable line, yeah. even just a clearing of her throat or like, of course, you know, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> That's my favorite. I, well, and I always, I, I like to watch like a fan and I sing and speak along with everybody. <laughs>
the Mindy Project, which she not only starred in, but she also created. And the, now the New York Times best-selling author is out with a season two of her wildly popular Netflix show. It's called Never Have I Ever, another project she, of course, created and wrote. Yeah, it's a coming-of-age comedy about the complicated life of a first-generation India uh, Indian-American teenager named Davy, played by my Trae. In this scene, uh, Davy is spying on her mother while she's on a date. Take a look. Basically stripping. Davy, don't jump to conclusions. Let's see if she answers a text from her only child. How's the work dinner? Getting a lot done? It's just... My mom just left me on red. Oh, oh and that's, that's big right there. <laughs> on a date with Common. It's good. It's really good. Yeah. On a Mindy, date with Common. I Mindy, know, on did, a hot date with Common. <laughs> Mindy, did you know she was magic? Did you know that my tray was magic right away? From the moment we met her. From the moment we met her. I, and I really, she is the most exceptional young actress that I've ever met. She's also my daughter. Yeah. And I thought that this would be a good time to tell, tell everyone. To complain about the nepotism that happened on Never Have I Ever. There was some nepotism. And no, we're talking I, about I it I wish now. she was my daughter. No, she was just this incredibly talented high school kid who like thought she like you know oh. thought she could do it and we saw her and we're like she's a star so my, we feel so lucky to have her and my tray is it true that you saw a tweet and you just thought you know what i let me try. haven't been yeah. in any show but <laughs> let me just give it a try yeah actually it was my best friend who saw it and they sent it to me and it was like yo like we could have fun with this so we decided to just go to our library community center and start filming. I can't even believe that this is how it began, and it's magic. Mindy, this idea, obviously, it comes, it's very close to your heart, this idea. So are you using stuff that's, like, ripped from your own headlines? Yeah, you know, I uh, created the show with my friend Lang Fisher, and we were both nerds in high school, but we were ambitious and wanted to have boyfriends. And I just felt like we didn't really get to see that mm -hmm. side of nerds, yeah. especially like Asian so women. We're usually depicted as kind of, you know, demure. And I like this character because she's feisty and smart and has like, you know, an anger problem. So <laughs> it was unusual. So it's a little bit like you. <laughs> no, you don't have an anger problem <laughs> at all. Bit, yeah. <laughs> I've read and um, how much Mindy has been an inspiration to mm -hmm. you, my trade, that you think of her as a mentor. Mm -hmm. Tell us why. Oh, yeah. Tell us why. I mean, okay, obviously, huge fan of The Office, my favorite comedy <laughs> of all time. But, of course, she plays Kelly Kapoor. But I think she's written some of the best episodes on The Office, in my expert office opinion. So I was like, she knows, like, all the comedic jokes and does everything. Like. I'm not even like trying to kiss her. Like, you Listen, know, I'll take it. I'll take it. She can more. do it all. Tell me more. No one can say that Mindy Kaling does not work hard because that is like just a lot. Like, she <laughs> always is working on something. And it's amazing. Have, and I'm to have clone someone, herself. Maitre, who, who you connected to, who looks like you. Yeah. You're like, wow, I get it. Yeah, honestly, I'm so thankful to have like Mindy Kaling as my first boss. <laughs> but as, you know, the office says, uh, Michael Scott. Uh, friend first, boss second. Oh, I love that. <laughs> okay, Mindy, Legally Blonde celebrated. Yes. We did a little bend and snap around here for Reese. 20th anniversary. Yeah. Are you done writing? Is Have it, you finished right. writing what, the what script? Where the are end? you? <laughs> We're in the middle of it. We actually just had a call with Reese last week to talk about it. And, you know, I mean, she's such a great creative, a creative partner for that project so yeah fingers crossed we'll see more of it soon do, do we have any idea like what is the concept we know she's older what's yeah. happening to her I cannot say anything how what a lame answer this is I can't <laughs> really really say anything about it I'm so sorry no that's, that's okay Except we'll that play a little game we'll wait. We're we will see some familiar faces okay, okay. oh familiar faces familiar that's faces. good to know all right we're gonna play a little game kids it's called never have I ever mm -hmm. the late night edition mm -hmm. so this is things you've done Jenna dropped her mic I dropped my oh, no I dropped my paddle, paddle. and I want to play all right things we've done as a teenager okay, okay. are you guys ready Okay. Yeah, we're so ready. ready. Okay. Never have I ever crawled in or out of a window to sneak out at night. I have never. Oh, no, we're lame. lame. Okay, never have I yeah. ever snooped through a family member's phone nope. after they went to bed. When a we were little, member? nobody had phones. Never, no. 
God, oh, wait. I haven't. You uh, have? You have? Oh, my God. When did you do that? Whose phone? Tell us. Uh, definitely, honestly, like everyone's phones in my family because I know everyone's passwords, everyone's email passwords, like everyone's, yeah. I have a really good memory of that stuff. Oh, that's so awesome. All right. You well, guys, congratulations. Congrats, this Mindy. This show is a huge hit and Con we cannot wait to congrats, see Congrats, Mitre. Two. We can't wait to see her future, too. It's going to be a big one. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. That's just shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you what you must know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For six seasons, Annie Murphy cracked us up as Alexis Rose, the slightly out of touch but always oh, lovable so daughter oh on the show God. with the objectable sounding name, <gasps> Shit's Creek. Well, now Annie's starring in another show, and we can't even say the name of that one, so why don't we just show the graphic. Kevin can blank himself. It's a spin on the classic sitcom, yet it's so different. Annie plays Allison, an unappreciated housewife who yearns for more than her stagnant life with her immature husband. <laughs> Poor Kevin. Take a look. Well, look at the time. You really should get... really should get going. Uh, man, can't we switch places for the day? How'd that work? Well, uh, you can wear a fat suit and install cable, and I can work at the happiest place on earth. It's a liquor store. I know what I said. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's well, so good to see by you. By the way, we missed you. We loved it. We, well, we are huge, huge fans of Schitt's Creek, and we couldn't wait to see what happens next. So just give us a little taste of what was life after the end of that kind of just iconic show? Oh, it was very sad for a while. I did a lot of kind of crying alone in my shower. Um, and then it was a little scary for a while because even though the show was so successful, uh, my phone wasn't ringing. Um, <laughs> That's then, weird. I know, we We're can't struck, believe we are that. struck by that. Like, we thought you win nine Emmys, your show is amazing, everyone is like, everyone, it's we, like we, the we cultural the lines, touchstone right. of everything. Sure enough. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> but it, it doesn't. It, it it still was a, a frighteningly quiet time. Um, but then this script came along, and it was so different and so exciting. And the fact that it bounced back and forth between the world of the sitcom, the classic sitcom that we've grown to know and maybe love, um, and then this gritty, um, dark single cam. It was a really really exciting. Thing. I mean, it is such an interesting show because it's this combination, as you said, of like the 90s sitcom mm -hmm. plus kind of like a breaking bad. So you're, an, tell me if I get this right and then expand. You're kind of an unhappy, unappreciated housewife. So when you're with the husband, things are glowy and whatever. And then you go out by yourself and things get a little dark. That Yeah, that's putting it lightly. <laughs> things do get a little dark. We find out that... Um, the 10 years with Kevin have kind of chipped away slowly at this woman's confidence and, and mind and heart and soul. Um, and she's tired and she's frustrated. And so she decides that she wants to make a change 
And that change may or may not include a plot to murder her husband. Oh, well, <laughs> that sounds like a good plan. Uh, you know, let's, Andy, let's take you back before this, before Schitt's Creek. And there's, oh, there's a time, I think, in every actor or actress's life where they wonder, like, am I in the right business? Should I be doing this? I mean, we read, and tell if this, if this is true, you had three bucks left, kind of to your name, and you were, I'm sure, at a fork in the road going, like, well, I need to eat and pay my rent and make a living. Um, just tell us about that moment and the moment that Schitt's Creek happened. Yeah, I mean, I think... Uh the three dollars has been a little bit hyperbolized, <laughs> maybe like three hundred. It was still a very small amount of money to to eat and pay rent with. Um, and also on top of that, I hadn't worked for almost two years. It was kind of always down to me and another woman for a part. And it always it seemed to always go to the other woman. So after hearing no so many times, you kind of start asking yourself if this is the right thing for you. And my skin wasn't quite thick enough to convince myself that it was the right thing for me. So I decided that I was going to like start down a completely new path. Mm. What that path was, I have no idea because I didn't mm. know if I had any other strengths. Mm. Um, but I, yeah, I decided that I was going to quit acting. And literally the next day I got um, mm. the audition for Schitt's Creek, which completely and utterly oh changed my, my life. God. So awesome. Okay, before we go, mm -hmm. we want to have play a quick game with you. Since your your show is called Kevin Can Blank Himself, we'd like to play okay. a little game called Fill in the Blank. We're going to ask you a question and then you fill in the blank, okay? All right, you okay. ready? Here's the first one. Yeah. My favorite Schitt's Creek memory is blank. Watching Daniel Levy get attacked by June bugs and scream <laughs> swearing down a dirt road. I like that. Okay, I don't leave home without my blank. Dog. I don't have a dog. Oh. <laughs> that's a lie. Uh, per, uh, purse. Okay. Purse, that's a good one. I stole blank from the set of Schitt's Creek. So many things. <laughs> so many things. I stole clothes. I stole um, artwork on the walls. I stole... Um, Alexis's pubic relations diploma. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have a, a, a trunk full of, of things, let's be honest. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay, wait, before we go, and I think we do this every time you're we here. We have to. We and I help feel ourselves. kind of bad, but you have a doppelganger on our show, Brittany Schreiber, who is one of our favorites. She oversees all of our concerts. Here y'all are. So wait. Look, you and Britt. It, I think oh, it's you. It, it's the smile. It's the eyes. It's it's and anyone. the teeth and the, the teeth. teeth. You We're guys, teeth twins. You She's guys the best are too. Anyway, we love you, Annie. Thank you so much for being with us. Okay, they say people come into our lives for a reason, and for Kristen Chenoweth, that reason is to make us smile. I love a wicked mm. reference. It sure is. She can do it all. She can dance. She can act. And now she's starring in the brand new musical comedy series on Apple TV Plus called Schmigadoon. It's about a couple in a relationship, Brett. They get stuck in a magical town where everyone is living in a musical. Totally normal. <laughs> so let's take a look. Our motto is we always strive for peace and happiness. What is Mrs. Layden? If Schmigadoon is to endure, it must be kept pristine and pure. This land on which our fathers trod must ever obey the laws of God. Look at your look at your look at your Joker lips and everything. Thank what are you doing? You but first of all, you always play nice. You always play sweetness and nice, mm -hmm. but not in Schmigadoon. Not in Schmigadoon. I had to call upon some people that maybe I know very well. I had to, I thought the Joker seemed pretty maniacal. Yes. And um, yeah, and maybe you know. The former leader of our country holding the Bible upside down, just silly things like that. Even people that don't like musicals are gonna laugh, I know, from my husband mm -hmm. who laughed out loud at this. This is the most edgy hilarious. Too, yeah. It's edge. edgy. It's, you know, my brother is very similar to your husband. He's like, I don't ever, I, I remember I was doing a musical in college and he said, don't ask me to come to one of those again. <laughs> and, but he'll, he'll love this because it does have the edge and then Keegan's character is the, the, guy. the, the person that doesn't like the musical yeah. and he's stuck yes. in this 
nightmare. I mean, if you wanted like the perfect cast, I think you might have it I there. Think, can you I mean, it? it's Alan Cumming, it's you, it's Cecily Strong, it's Keegan Michael Key, it's Jane Kurkowski. Martin, it's Martin Short, Short is the leprechaun. I know. I mean, I mean, Ariana DeBose, Dove Cameron. And I heard yeah. that even when y'all were quarantining, you and Alan would do <laughs> sing-offs in the shower. I mean, two different Where bathrooms. There y'all are. <laughs> oh, there we are. Well, we'll see. That's the day I got out of quarantine. He was like, let's go to lunch. So he was my next door neighbor at the hotel. And I'm a night owl. And I would sing at night practicing. I had an 18-pager in a an song. An 18-pager. I know. I can't believe she did that. I know. I, I couldn't, couldn't believe it. So I would find 3 a.m. would be the perfect time for me to wake up and see if I had it. And one time, Alan was listening. And he just banged on the wall like, Please stop. <laughs> I beg you to please stop. I beg you. But he, I heard him singing, too. So. And I love that you stood for the first time in a year mm -hmm. and a half in front of an audience of 4,000. You got up on stage and you sang that first note. So how, what was that connection like? You know, I love the connection anyway between the audience and the artist. I love to be in the audience, but I wanted to be great mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they all wanted to be there. They wanted to be there, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be great. And I knew that it was going to be hard, because I hadn't done it in a year and a half, the, the two-hour show. And the minute I heard the orchestra downbeat to, if you can believe it, que sera, sera, that song. <laughs> it's a beautiful orchestration. I walked out on stage, and the audience clapping, standing, and oh, just tears. I already have tears I'm right crying, now. and I have <laughs> never been and, able to do and that. Yeah. And you, you wept in front of the audience, huh? Yeah, and I thought, it's okay that they see this. And I, I held it together through the whole show until the very end when I sing um, a song, Charlie Chaplin's Smile. Mm -hmm. I sing it just with me in the piano. And I heard my pianist, Mary Mitchell Campbell, playing her, her interlude solo. And I saw how much she was moved by mm -hmm. it. Then I started crying again. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Kristen, really pull it together. Girl. Well, speaking of tears, um, you've had a lot of tears of joy because, yes. as you said, you found your person named Josh. <laughs> I what a, what I mean, you found your person. I did. Did, I you, found my did person. you think that that day would come? No, and we had, we had met at, at my niece's wedding. Mm -mm. He was in a band that was playing, if you could believe it. And he finally, we finally came together and met. And he said, "I'm going to court you." And I thought, oh, "Okay, I'm, I'm very you. busy. I'm yeah, very busy. Down. I don't have time for that." No, no, I'm, I just said it. And he did. And COVID is what brought us closer together. I think that that was a real sign for people. Either it brought people closer, or it drove and them apart. And you had you had to hit the brakes. Was it hard just quickly? Was it hard hitting the brakes for Kristen Chenoweth? The hardest. You're a worker. The yeah. hard, I'm, the, yeah. I'm like you guys, workhorse. Thank you for being with Schmigadoon. us. Mega Dune! Check out, it's on Apple TV Plus. Don't forget to. Good morning, everybody. They are just sipping out here for a while. We have some, yes! There you go. Get that energy up. All right, we have some metal worthy skincare products from around the globe. Yeah, new beauties editor at large, Sarah Ingenberger, is here to feature the most popular international beauty buys. And all you have to do, y'all, shop with us. Just scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Right there. Join in. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so we have to start in the United States, right? That's right. Yeah, Taking the like goal. This is the UN okay. of beauty, but let's start at the U.S. Drunk Elephant. It is loved by so many. In fact, it is Sephora's top growing brand in history. Oh, wow. Over 230 beauty awards, it takes the gold by far. This is their set that you can actually try all their products. It's a great That's little a kit idea. if you want a drunk moment, kind of have a fun play on the name, mm -hmm. or just as a travel, as we start to travel again, it's a great way what to What are they experience. known for? Like, why are they so popular? What is it's it about? It's a biocompatible them? skincare line. So they have what they call these six ingredients that they don't prefer because it causes the skin irritation. Okay. So it's clean beauty in some ways, It's right? clean beauty, but it's also what works best for your skin and for formulations. All right. So it's the key of formulations that is why this is so successful. Okay. We've got the Canadian flags here. What's the top seller there? Even though you can get it here, but it's a top seller yes, there. Yes, this has taken over Google searches. It is the top searched product line. Because it has such a cult following, the products are amazing and the price what point is, is so affordable. The Ordinary. Check this out. A hyaluronic serum for $6.80. Oh, wow. $6? $6? You cannot beat this, stuck. right? It's an amazing price point. It is so good for the skin. If you're oily, it's great as a standalone moisturizer. If you have dry skin, use it underneath your moisturizer. Is it like a serum? It yeah. is a serum. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so coming up next, uh, home country of the Olympics, Japan. Yes. This is an eye cream? Yes. Hosting at the Olympics is Japan. Shiseido is an amazing product. 
product. It is the largest revenue skincare brand that is available. It has taken over wow. the market. It has a great history to it. Started as a family business in Japan and has just exploded worldwide. This is their eye cream. So if you're counting the crow's feet, which some of us have, yeah, yeah. Yes. Sarah, I Sarah is not. Okay. I think Sarah was looking, looking at me. <laughs> Anyone who is, this is a great eye cream to use both in the AM and the PM. It's going to just hydrate, smooth, keep your eyes oh. hydrated for over 48 hours. It's really quickly, product. how are the price points for all of these? Uh, very affordable. Okay. And so this is going to be a little bit on the higher end, but you get so much from it, and a little bit goes a long way. You'll have this for months if you use it religiously. Yeah, okay. our crowd. Somebody just gave a thumbs up. I saw up. that thumbs up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, where is Yeah. Yes. It's a good okay. crowd. I got you. Speaking of gentlemen using eye cream, Jacob told us this morning this is his favorite product. My wife, really? my kids, yes. we France. love this uh, sunscreen. You cannot go wrong. So La Roche Posay has a, such an interesting history. It's actually a town in the French countryside. You should go there. It's beautiful. It's Ooh. known for its spring water. They took this healing ingredient, put it in all their products. So they're allergy tested, great for all sensitive skins. But this is their sunscreen. It's made with minimal ingredients. And so even if you have a sensitive skin, it's great to use. So La Roche Posay, beautiful countryside to go visit. Great products yeah. for allergy tested. And where skin. can you get this anywhere? I right? see this all over the place. You see in the it everywhere. US. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. also a very popular product. All right. What about this next one? Okay. This thing. It's a tool from Sweden. That's all I need. It is. It's taking the innovation yeah. of Sweden. A device is sold every 10 seconds. It's okay. amazing how incredible it is. This is like a sit up for your face. A sit up? Oh, sit yes. Up it's a face. microcurrent. Just rub it across oh, you your skin. It's going to help you tight. You'll have to turn it on. Oh, I don't think it's going to charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you just, um, so you'll just feel it's like a little vibration is what you'll feel with and it. And what's you just it do? It across your skin. It'll tighten. It'll good. help with the elastin, with the collagen production. It's try it, y'all. Try it on your It's a jaw. personal trainer. Yeah. So you you'll put the serum it. underneath it you and yes. then turn this on. Yes, exactly. And you get a sit-ups for your cheeks. And you get your sit-ups. Personal trainer. A little, a little pocket cheeks. personal Wait, trainer. Like, all right. And what's uh, what, what's next? Hair, We're heading to Italy. We're heading to Italy. It damage from the sun. Right. And, you know, if you do color your hair, this is great for colored hair. It's an amazing product to really help to add the vibrancy to your hair. The entire collection of products is amazing. High quality ingredients, but it also has that scientific rigor behind it. So it's both like the science and the natural pulled together for an effective product. Italy nice takes the gold. Yeah, Love the beautiful. packaging. All right, this is a great affordable Greece? price. Let's, okay. let's go trip around the world. Let's Shall go to Greece. The home of the Olympics. Yes, they have over 6,000 unique ingredients to Greece. 1,600 only found in Greece. They work with Greek organic farmers to harvest ingredients at their peak potency to make the best products. And so this is their Greek yogurt. Wait, real yogurt? Real yogurt. For your, wait, real yogurt for Greek your face. yogurt, but for your face. So <laughs> just like you would think how a Greek yogurt might feel on your face, very cooling, very refreshing, but in a moisturizer. Can we just try that at home with our yogurt? Oh, no. well, it's a little bit different. There's okay. other key ingredients that are Don't in here it. that make Don't it beneficial. It. Yes, so you might find that this is a little bit more better formulated for your skin, but a great product to use. Well, Sarah, thank you so stuff. much. That was a really thank fast you. trip. Okay, and if you'd like more of these brands and products, check out today.com slash shop. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad <laughs> The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them, doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Just like K-pop, K-beauty, aka Korean beauty, has been popular for quite some time here in the States. 
but move over, Kay. It's the Jay's time in the spotlight. <laughs> That's right. Japanese beauty is having a moment. And our friend Candice Kumash chose some products popular with Japanese women for radiant, glowing skin. We all want radiant, glowing yes, skin, right? We sure right. do. So Candice is a travel and culture writer and the author of Kintsugi Wellness. Did I say it yes, right? Yes. 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 We're so happy to Thank see you. you. Yes. Jenna and uh, Chanel. Oh, and by, Chanel. Chanel. And by the way, the so best part exciting. of all of this is that if you see something you like, just scan the QR code on your screen to find it, to purchase it, Buy to get it, it as a gift, all that good stuff. whatever you want. Okay, so tell us what's new in Japanese beauty right now. Good idea on the gifts, too. Yeah. So I was thinking I would introduce you guys to Dam Dam, which is from Tokyo, okay. which is the hot place right now. There's a silky cleansing oil, which is made out of rice bran. Wow. The Japanese like using elements like rice and also mushrooms or charcoal, things that you wouldn't think of to use. Okay. They And isn't it true that your grandmother, which is and was your beauty inspiration? Totally. Her skin was so beautiful. Mm. We have a thing in Japan called supin bijin, okay. and it means clean, natural beauty. So the oh, better beautiful. your skin. Gorgeous. I don't think she has a, any makeup no. on this. And I know she didn't see, you know, Botox or yes. anything like that. <laughs> I know, but her skin is just naturally beautiful. Yeah. What did you learn about how, you know, Japanese women take care of their skin? Is there a secret you can share? Yes, absolutely. They double cleanse. They double like cleanse. using a gentle We exfoliator. probably need to triple cleanse. I know, right? I know. But then how do you keep it from drying? Well, I would show you guys a couple of moisturizing agents along the way, too. Well, if, show us your cleansers first, okay? You, if you love a cleanser, this yeah. one really does purify. It's made with a little bit of cognac root. It is super clean, and so you feel clean after you use it mm -hmm. and then this silky rice cleansing oil again is made out of that rice bran and mm -hmm. so Japanese women used to use leftover rice water to wash and cleanse their face mm -hmm. so this is kind of like doing what grandma did yeah exactly, exactly. Right. makanai is known for its clean beauty it was started at a gold mill in oh Japan that's that. the charcoal oh, that's nice. soap oh, I charcoal. love it this is the charcoal sponge so Chanel if you put it in put this in yes Okay. You can see. Oh, it turns into a sponge. It'll turn into a sponge in five minutes, and you use it as a natural exfoliator. It's okay. biodegradable. It's compostable. And do you use it with this soap? This soap is detoxifying with the charcoal properties. Okay. It's aged and cured, oh, just wow. like you almost would with, like, say, miso. Yeah. So it feels so clean on your skin. I love that. Let's move on to syrup. I know. It's my new obsession. The yeah. serum. It is. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so after cleansing, you want to stay moisturized like you asked. So yeah. this is the secret for that. These are two of my favorite serums. This is the Shiseido Ultimune. Okay. It helps to protect the skin. It helps to hydrate the skin. Yeah, look at that. It's I'm their a number stuff. one this serum. This is good. Right? Are you a serum Oh, yeah. It keeps you wow. hydrated Is this what you use? Because your skin is gorgeous. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I used all of these just for you, ladies. Oh, my God. The last two weeks to make sure. This is the Makanai Skin Jewel Serum. Whoa, it's Chanel. made with gold, gold flakes. Okay. Shake it up. That I can do. Beautiful gold. Look, there's gold on my So all natural plant seed and nut oils Ooh. and then the gold flakes add that illuminous glow. Oh my gosh. So put it on at night or in the morning and put it on your hands Ooh, too. Wow. Jenna that is Chanel, crazy. It keeps the hands looking fabulous that as well. That is beautiful. Okay, let's move okay. on to sunscreen. Japanese women are protecting yeah. all the time. This is the sunscreen stick. It's lightweight. Oh my gosh. It goes under makeup or over makeup so you can put it on now. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> I have one of those. You know I like this because it doesn't show up. You don't get like it's yes. and darker skin. You don't get the I yes. love that. It's yeah. for all skin tones. Yeah. It is a uh, Hawaii like safe so it's reef safe and I do like awesome. it mainly because it can go anywhere with bag. you yes. yeah I love this okay you know it. masks now we're going to the masks this one is a favorite this is the Makanai perfector sheet it's real gold how, wow so real gold you how expensive this? is real gold <laughs> is this expensive <laughs> It's made with 24 karat gold. It, it is expensive, but I think they priced it well okay. yeah. so that you can buy this as a gift for a girl like a treat. or like, you know, for your treat for the weekend. Yes. Absolutely love this okay. product. Then we have a rice face mask. It's supposed to shrink pores and keep you really, really moisturized. These are the under eye patches. So oh, I want that. These are by well, Kose. I but I can't put it on they, right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you would basically take these little under eye patches yes. and place them under right eyes. underneath your eyes. Do you do it in the morning or at night or both? I do it mainly at night. Just okay. relax, yes. read a book, check okay. out, Candace, do you, it all. Your skin is glowing. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much you for so all much. of these ideas. These are really great. For yeah, more yeah. on these products, head to today.com slash shop. 
And this morning, we are featuring items that online shoppers absolutely love. The fashion and beauty picks that get the very best reviews. Crazy rating. And apparently the highest ratings, too. We are wait we've been waiting for this list. Yahoo contributing editor Chassie Post is here to share the goods. And by the way, if you do see something you like, take your smartphone, open up the camera. You know what to do. Scan that QR code right underneath Craig. And it's right there at the bottom of your screen. That's right. That's how you get instant access to all these great deals. Let's jump right in. Chassie, let's talk about this midi wrap dress that is all the rage. <laughs> It is, Carson. I mean, shoppers are loving this little dress, and I totally get why. It is so on trend. It's like the number one trend of the summer, this little boho romantic dress. And it's also kind of like a high-end designer dupe. We've seen dresses that look like this for hundreds of dollars running around town, and it's around $40. Plus, people love that it is pure comfort. I mean, Oh, it's got an elastic waistband oh, and oh. super soft fabric mm -hmm. and an A-line silhouette that looks great on everyone. And look, you can wear it absolutely anywhere. It's a grab-and-go dress, and we love it. Chazzy, speaking of comfy, I think a lot of us spent a lot of the pandemic in, like, loungewear, and nobody wanted regular pants, but you might have a good transition piece. I do, I do, I do. Okay, this is the paper bag pant. And this is a number one bestseller, over 12,000 reviews. And Hoda, what people love about it is, it looks like a fancy uh, tailored trouser, uh -huh. but it feels like you're wearing sweatpants. Again, this little paper bag uh, waist, which is a big trend, is elastic, so you pull it on. The fabric is stretch. It's so comfy, and it comes in over 20 colors and it's really flattering with that high waist and i love that designers are helping us ease back into real clothes yeah, yeah. price is right too yeah and yeah. i love a nice high waist oh, yeah. pant. Nice hey deal. chassis i've been i've been looking for a bag to upgrade my look and i understand you have an affordable option oh my goodness so this little bag it's called the triple zip crossbody <laughs> and here's oh. what people love about it first of all it's light as air you put it on and it's small enough to forget that you're wearing it, but it's large enough to fit all of your essentials. And I love a crossbody because it's like your own little personal assistant. You run around hands free. Everything's right at the ready. And shoppers are loving these colors. They've got great summer brights. They've got classics. They've got one of my favorites, which is the new neutral, which is a metallic Ooh. and over 8,800 reviews. So <sighs> It's around $20. This is a winner, for sure. Um, Chassie, I know when people go out for kind of a fancy night out, sometimes we like to wear fake eyelashes, but they are a pain to put on, and that's why most people stay away, but you might have the answer. <laughs> We hear you, Hoda. Yes, it is a great look, but all that glue, oh my goodness. So this is a little miracle. It is a magnetic um, eyeliner and also eyelash kit. Magnetic. And this is how it works. Yes, it's magnetic. So you take the eyeliner and you apply it to your um, lash line and it has magnetic properties in it. And then you take the little eyelash, you just place it on and it connects because wow. it's magnetic. So. No glue. You can take it off, use it again and again because no glue. 22,000 reviews. And it comes in five different, uh, along with five different lengths of lashes. So you can choose how dramatic you want to be and on that next is date Is it easy night. to get rid of that, to clean off the eyeliner once you're done with it? Yes, with oh. soap and water. Wow. So, I mean, this, this is uh, pretty interesting. <laughs> Ch Chassie, I um, I enjoy showering for one reason, and that is because I have, I don't know if you have this, Craig, I have a two-for-one. I have a shampoo, conditioner, all-in-one. Really? So I'm is lickety split in that. I actually have a three-in-one, but that's a whole other situation. <laughs> um, you have a very popular shampoo and conditioner that I'd like for you to tell us all about. Yes, we do. So this is the Wow Apple Cider Vinegar Shampoo oh. and Conditioner Set. Apple so cider it's vinegar. a two and two, yes. And People are really passionate about this shampoo, shampoo dynamic duo. 59,000 reviews, guys. And here's what people love. It's made with real apple cider vinegar, so it's like a detox for your hair. Mm. So it busts up all that old product you may have in your hair, excess oil, mm. and it really leaves your hair you know, super bright and shiny and a lot of volume. And the conditioner, it's avocado oil 
and coconut oil. I mean, it smells so good. I can't even tell you. Very nourishing. And I mean, popular doesn't even begin to describe Apple people's soda. feelings What's for the shampoo thing? set. It's the gel, like the body gel. Oh, oh so it's all ha- one? Shampoo, conditioner, <laughs> and, it, and body. Is it pert? I don't know who makes it. <laughs> Three in one. I'm not sponsored okay. yet. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Apple cider vinegar. That's yeah, interesting. interesting. Yeah. Thanks, If your Jeff. hair has heartburn, you'll be in good shape, too. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. (laughs) Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. (laughs) And important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. We are back with today's style. Are you ready to go back to a more normal routine, but not ready to give up your pandemic elastic pants? Well, good news when it comes to fashion, comfy is the new sheet. Absolutely. E! News style correspondent Zana Roberts Rossi is here with the latest trends that will take us from summer to fall. So good to see you. I see you. Good to see you. I am. I know, oh, IRL. Oh, we really have a runway here, we're ready. We've got so we have models and people. But so yeah. comfort, like people are not going back to super high heels and stuff that's too tight? Absolutely no way. After a year and a half of comfort dressing, designers know that we're not ready to go and buy Fair restricting enough. clothes. Yeah. But it is time to peel off the tie-dye hoodie, yes. get rid of the sweatpants, <laughs> retire the quarantine uniform, and get into some clothes that are going to motivate us to get back to some normalcy. Well, okay. Let's look at our first okay. look. We've got our model, Shivani. With This is a back-to-work look. A back-to-work look. So we were thinking about back-to-work, and the answer to this is a non-traditional take on the suit, okay. right? So it's easy wear, loose fitting, and I love the idea of this, like, oversized blazer. And these pants have got an elastic waist. This thing is as comfortable nice. as any sweatpant. And can we do sneakers? Uh- there's nothing cooler than a suit with a sneaker. And I think if you can get away with it in your workplace, then absolutely do. And I love this colorful fall. We're seeing this trend of pastels and bright colors mm-hmm. moving into fall. Because I think people are just craving color and optimism. Yeah, I love it. We'll take it. All right, let's bring in our next Thanks, model, Shabani. Phyllis. Now, you say this is the wear everywhere dress. Is that right? That is cute. Isn't it cute? Yeah. You can wear this absolutely anywhere. The reason being, it's kind of a hybrid dress. It's the shirt dress. It's got this utilitarian feel to it that you can wear. The shirt feels like a button down, but then you've also got the dress vibe of it you can wear for any day. I love this tote bag with it as well. The tote Mm -hmm. is the new it bag of the season, everyone, because we're going to be having life outside the house again. We need bigger bags. We're going to be work, play, travel. It's all coming back. You look so cute. You you could also wear that with sneakers, too. That would also be super cute. cute. Sneakers or even a heel for evening. All right, how about a day out and about? We've got Madison this morning as our model. Madison is where this is the t-shirt dress. Now, the t-shirt dress is underrated. This can be dolled up in any way. Oh. Nautical vibes here, throw in a blazer for the fall cooler months. This is a H&M blazer, uh, sorry, a Zara blazer with the gold hardware, and I love the pop of the bag. And then this raffia shoe yeah, is great because you get the height, but also the comfort. And let's face it, our feet are not quite ready 
to get back in big heels. I love it. Dude, Madison looks like Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> she does. Look at her. I know. Have you heard this before? Wait, have you heard that? She yes, nodded. she really does. Thank you, Madison. What a compliment. Slash I, I love that. Okay, so now we're ready for a night out, but I feel like you still want to be comfortable, even for me on a night out, right? Absolutely, right? And no one deserves a night out quite like Petra, who just had a baby. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Three month old baby. What? Stop it I right know. now. I'm looking in this beautiful asymmetric jumpsuit. So it's a very fluid jersey, so mm. it's super comfortable. Cute. It's actually got a built in bodice as well, so you get the support and structure. I love the idea with the flutter sleeve and a little bit of a heel. If you are going to wear a heel, Let's go, let's ease back into yeah, it with yeah. a block heel, and then the pop of a bag. I love the little bit again of wearable optimism with a nice orange bag. It's really cute. I like, I like the pop of color. Actually, we can't forget the guys, especially especially your guy. Let's bring Keneal. Keneal. He's oh, modeling a great look for guys. He brought you flowers. Oh. Honey. <laughs> She's ready for her date tonight. Ready for her date night. And Ken Neal is wearing this super casual. So you've got this plaid pant, which is really easy. Again, elasticated waist. Oh. Um, and then it just sharpens up with this blazer from Uniqlo and these sharp shoes. And these guys deserve a night out with a new baby. Like, you would not believe. They <laughs> do. It. Congratulations, Can we have guys. all of our models come right out one more time? We'll just show these cute looks. I love that comfort is key, Zanna. We'll take it. You've done Thank it again. You. Comfort is key. Once again. All right. Well, by the way, you can see these styles and more by scanning our QR code at the bottom of your screen or by heading to today.com slash shop. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> We are back with our friend Chassie Post. You can catch her on the brand new show. It's called Shop All Day. It's over on our streaming channel today, all day. Today's episode is all about hot accessories, and she has brought along a sneak peek for us. Don't forget, you can scan that QR code on your screen to see all of her products. Chassie, good morning. Morning. What's up, Chass? Hi. Good morning. Well, you guys know I love finding the latest in fashion at the most affordable prices, and today's episode it's all about accessories, which can be such a great way to test drive trends or even breathe new life into last year's wardrobe. Well, let's zoom in then. Let's start with hats. Oh, my goodness. This hat, this is the felt-shaped hat. It's a collaboration between Madewell and Biltmore. And I've got to say, this style hat is probably the biggest trend of the entire season. And we're so excited about this collaboration. So Madewell is a brand you guys all know and love. Sure. But mm -hmm. Biltmore, it's a Canadian haberdashery. It's over 100 years old. And it's mm -hmm. run by, yes, a guy named Eric Lines, who is the num one of the number one hat aficionados in the entire world so he designed this hat and it's a perfect example of the trend it's it's, it's cute. this beautiful camel color a wide brim it's flattering on most face shapes a mm -hmm. great shaped crown i mean i couldn't believe that we How found much a hat of this quality it's 47.99 oh, oh, wow. for under 50 dollars yeah. can guys wear such that, a Cassie? great deal Oh, yes, Al. This would leave so love great on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do love your hats. Chassie, another uh, accessory having a moment that I can't really pull off right now is the belt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, belts are Go back, <laughs> and I was thrilled, guys, to find 
these set of two classic belts. And um, what we love about them is they're faux leather and faux suede, but the star of this belt is the double O ring mm -hmm. buckle. It's got that high end designer look without, you know, the high end designer prices. And so it comes in a set of two for under $20, and you can wear it with absolutely everything in your closet. And the new way we're seeing gals wear it is just sort of over their sweaters and over their cardigans mm. and over a blazer mm -hmm. or even over your favorite coat. So this is a great way to upgrade. Tess, your, your show, it features some, some really cool interviews every week with influencers and this week, no exception. You've got TV personality and blogger uh, Ali Fedadowski uh, Mano, right? Yes, and I'm so excited about Adriana Brock and Allie's interview on the episode today. And you guys know Allie from uh, The Bachelor. The Bachelor? Yes, but guess what? Now I'm she's a mom of two. Wow. <laughs> and she's also a mega influencer. She has almost a million followers. So Adriana and Allie, they talked about a lot of things, but they also talked about some of Allie's favorite accessories and this genius accessories hack. So first, let's talk about one of her favorite necklaces. Okay. And this is actually a dainty layered necklace mm. set. So it comes in a set of three. That's They're meant to be worn together, right? It's such a big trend. But listen to this hack. And this is under $15 for the three. Oh, you're but this wearing hat, Yeah, Dylan is wearing the top. Oh, good, right? My kids faces on them, but. <laughs> oh, yes. They're always on fleek. Dylan, you're so in on the trend. But Dylan, guess what you also need? This little hack that Allie talked about is genius. It is like a clasp. It is a magnetic lock Ooh, locking To keep them clasp. from... Yes, oh, it's like a necklace spacer, spacer. Yep, so huh. it keeps all of your necklaces that is in, the, in How their much own is that? lane. I can't read this. It's six dollars and ninety nine oh, cents. So they'll never get tangled, and we love that layered look. But I mean, they always get tangled, always get tangled. and it's really easy, right, to put on the. Um, clasp on your own because it's bigger and Done. it's magnetic. So right. very cool, right? Hey, hey Chassie, uh, I, I see that you got a tote there. Couldn't you have gotten a bigger one? <laughs> <laughs> well, Al, guess what? What? This tote is next level because it folds down into this tiny five by five inch. Get out of here. And it, <laughs> yes. And it's by Bagu. And what's so great about oh, it is Bagu. it's light as air, right? And you it don't know one I, they make great <laughs> recyclable bags. I use yes. them to go shopping. Oh, food exactly. shopping. They make great bags. Yes. But guess what, Al? They're not just for groceries. These are light as air, mm -hmm. 1.3 ounces, but they can hold up to 50 pounds. And you're right. You can put a kid out. in there. <laughs> well, not. Yes! And Jesse, Jesse, we're running out of time. But real quick, we have okay. to get to this umbrella because Al claims it makes oh, it yes. rain. That's right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is so from Jen Fallick's Better Basics part of the show. She talks about things that elevate the everyday and Ooh. she finds the coolest products. So this umbrella, it is called the two layer inverted umbrella and it is so genius. So what you do is it opens and closes inside out. Nice. So when you, oh, when you close like it, the wet part goes on the inside, the That's dry cool. part stays on the outside. So there are no puddles. And yeah. then see that C handle, yeah. you can slide it over your wrist nice. or your forearm and walk around That's hands free. Chassis post, making it rain. I love it. That's Thank genius, you so actually. much really for good. joining us this week. These are places we may not be able to visit for a while. Come with us as we take you there into our incredible world. Before you see it, you hear it. Iguazu, in native language, the name means big water. A waterfall twice as tall as Niagara and miles wide. We take a boat across the rapids to one of the wonders of nature. This is the largest waterfall system in the world. So huge, it cuts across two nations. Over there is Brazil. This side, Argentina. Disgorging the contents of five Olympic swimming pools every second, the center of the falls, called Devil's Throat. You can feel the sheer power of the falls. Our little boat is getting buffeted around and there is a constant mist in my face. But we're still not wet enough for these guys. Not even close. To truly feel 
the full force of these falls, you have to get soaked. Water, a precious source of life. In Brazil, it is everywhere. And the most famous waterway of all is, of course, the Amazon. What you're seeing is not an illusion. This is where two massive rivers come together, one black, one brown. They form the mighty Amazon. The Amazon River spans the entire country, flowing more than 4,000 miles, 450 miles further than the Mississippi. The rainforest with which the river shares its name is a haven for 40,000 kinds of plants and a staggering 10% of the world's wildlife, 1,300 different birds. And among the many animals here, 3,000 species of fish. Today, we're on a fishing expedition like no other, to catch piranha. Sandro Gamma descended on his mother's side from an Amazonian tribe. He now runs tours of the ancient river. It's like magic. It's a magical place. Uh, magical place. <laughs> Sandro guides our boat away from the main part of the river into one of the smaller tributaries. The channel is shaded by trees and the water here is shallower. The best place to find piranha. Piranha will eat almost any meat, even, rarely, humans. To attract these underwater killers, Sandro mimics a distressed animal in the water. They like noise. They like noise like this. It's less like fishing, more like hunting. Would it help if I cut my finger and put it in the water? <laughs> oh, I caught one. You got one, you got one. Then Sandro hooks one. Yeah, wow. Those are some sharp teeth. She's saying, come any closer, I'm going to bite your face off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Day one over, and we've caught one fish. But a hunter always eats what he catches. She wanted to eat me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this is my revenge. It's your revenge, right. It tastes like cod, like kind of... Oh, yeah, like freshwater fish. It tastes uh, like a freshwater fish, uh, actually. Uh, there isn't very much meat here. It's, this is, I mean, it's very bony. It's day two, and we try another fishing spot. This time, I have more luck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta go one, I think yeah. I got one. Yes! Yes, my All brother. right! <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be able to do that. It looks like I wasn't the only one to target this fish. Piranhas even prey on each other. Uh, wow. I took a chunk of her to, you see, this area here. Hold it by here. Yeah. Woohoo! OK, I think you should do this, because I don't want to cause her any more pain, honestly. Okay. And also, I don't want to cause myself any pain. Right. Our fishing expedition, somewhat successful, Sandro has a final surprise. He assures me, and I took some reassuring, there are no piranhas here. But beneath the water, we are soon surrounded by the Amazon's famous pink dolphin. <laughs> Whoa, he's touching. <laughs> they're, they're, they're rubbing against our legs here. It's incredible. It's like rubber. The people here believe these dolphins are princes. Yeah, I can see that. Dolphins are, are very mythological animals right. for the Amazon. According to the indigenous legend, after midnight, he becomes a handsome boy. Right. And suddenly, he chases the girls. And when really? she, she's pregnant, she will blame on the dolphins. <laughs> she will blame on the dolphins. They are no threat to us, of course, but it turns out the fish they eat include piranhas. In the Amazon, every animal depends on another. The power and the beauty of this river and its inhabitants, both stunning and humbling. Next, somewhere beneath this vast canopy of green, deep in the heart of the rainforest, these colossal giants and what it's like to climb one. I am now officially really quite frightened. 
Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to you today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. The Amazon, a vast two million square miles of awesome, largely untamed nature. An estimated 390 million trees. Today, I'm climbing just one. But it's a monster. How tall is the tree we're going to climb? It's 180 feet. My guide, Leo Princey, knows the rainforest well. Not too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's traditions like this method of preventing insect bites. I can smell it, yeah. <clears throat> Covering yourself with dead ants. <laughs> they, they bite you. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they bite you while you're trying to stop other insects from biting <laughs> And the jungle's predators. That's where a jaguar's climbed the tree. Yeah, one year ago, around. Don't think that if you want to run from a jaguar, if you climb a tree, you are safe. Not exactly reassuring. I don't think I've climbed a tree since I was a boy. <laughs> and definitely not like this. And don't look down, right? Ah, you can look if you want. <laughs> Halfway. Yeah. This is halfway. Yeah. As I sweat, Leo's nine-year-old daughter Kenna passes me. Fearless. Not exactly how I feel. Talking to me like this is a good way to stop me from thinking about the fact that I'm hanging by a rope about a hundred feet in the air. I'm increasingly nervous. I am now officially really quite frightened. <laughs> Finally, reaching the top. Okay, don't look down, don't look down, don't look down. I can't actually believe that I, I have got up here. <laughs> Honestly, my legs are shaking, <laughs> even though I've got this rope attached to me. But the view is just stunning. The air above the Amazon, thick with the sounds and smells of life. Look around, just to look around. The experience of a lifetime, exhilarating and a little exhausting. I think I've earned a rest. Leo can't easily relax. He's increasingly worried for his forest. His home is here in the jungle with his wife, Vanessa. Their children were born on this deck. All three are homeschooled. They playfully call their dad the guru. What he knows is that this place is increasingly threatened. Fires have raged across the forest. Logging is destroying yet more. The wonderful wildlife here threatened from all angles. But it doesn't have to be this way. People have plundered the Amazon's rich resources for more than 100 years, when European traders exploited the Amazon for rubber. But next, how those same men created something here that was extraordinary and beautiful. When they built, of all things, an opera house in the heart of this rainforest.
make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Deep in the Amazon rainforest, this seemingly infinite green canopy of trees, broken only by the winding silver thread of this 4,000 mile river, is a history that we might be able to learn from. 120 years ago, a lone paddle steam made its way along here. And on board, Carlos Fermin Fitzcarraldt, who had what many people said was a crazy dream to build an opera house in the heart of the jungle. So determined was he that at one point, and the inspiration for the movie Fitzcarraldo, he had his steamship taken apart piece by piece and transported over a mountain. And though Fitzcarraldt never fulfilled his dream, others did. In the 1890s, out of the jungle rose this spectacular, unlikely structure. And from within, came this. The Teatro Amazonas, completed in 1896, is celebrated as one of the most magnificent opera houses in the world. The theatre is located in today's bustling riverside city of Manaus, built by barons made rich by the 19th century rubber trade early exploiters of the Amazon's rich resources. They wanted to rival the grand opera houses of Europe and bring civilization to this remote part of the world. Gabriel. Oh, cute. Hey, how are you? Gabriel Leal is my guide to the theater. When they built this place 120 years ago, yes. what was here? Oh, there is nothing here. It was only the jungle. Look at this. It feels like it's never been changed in all that time. They bought the most expensive, the best materials of the world to put here. The chandeliers are bronze and crystals from France. They are French chandeliers from Paris. We're okay. in the middle of the Amazon. Yes. yes. Under chandeliers from France. Yes. This is an Italian style. Yes. It's a small piece of Italy and Manaus. You can see why they call it the Noble Room. The magnificent dome is decorated with 36,000 tiles. And breathtaking though the architecture is, it is at night for the music that the people come. The orchestra is led by conductor Ottavio Simoes. 
something that really struck me was you said, good evening. Boa noite. And the whole audience answered, says, good evening back to you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Warm climate, warm people. Warm nights, warm yeah. people. It's for sure. Where is he? That guy from the mustache. Yeah. yeah. It's a Brazilian composer. Otavio points to his ancestor, looking down from the ceiling above us. He was your great, great, great grandfather. Yeah. He's looking down on you. He's looking down. Every day when I, I'm ready to conduct something, I look at him and say, I say, well, here I go again. <laughs> What's so special about this place? When you see the world map, can you imagine in the rainforest something like... Something like this? this. Yes, yes, it's a wonderful place. It's special. Perhaps this jewel in the jungle can teach us something. That we humans don't have to do damage. That we can add to nature's beauty. Of course, that's not today's story of us and the Amazon, but maybe one day we will learn to coexist and share our planet with nature. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. Oh, in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It feels like another lifetime. Back when flying around the world was so much easier, we took an incredible journey across Africa. Dawn over the Maasai Mara. Beneath us, roaming free, the big beasts of Kenya. On this journey, We'll get close to the animals of this vast continent. That big guy. Oof. He is telling us that he's there. He's looking right at us. From the fiercest to the fastest, to the tallest on land, and the deadliest beneath the water. And where better to begin than with a hunter as old as the dinosaurs, the ancient crocodile. You don't feel nervous this close to them? They're shy, they, they'll go away. Sami Muneye has lived in this part of Africa all his life. He respects the rhythms of the place. Because this one seems to be looking. Well, he's already eaten. <laughs> he's already eaten? He's already eaten. <laughs> OK. We can learn from Africa, he says, how to look after ourselves and our planet. But we are so greedy. Animals are, most of them are opportunists. We are so greedy. We fly south on a journey that will take us right across the continent. First to what's been called 
Africa's last Eden. If the natural world is worth saving, this place is the reason why. The Okavango Delta, an inland river basin so vast it's visible from space. A watery paradise in the midst of Botswana's Kalahari Desert, best experienced in a traditional dugout called a Makora. Welcome to the wilderness. <laughs> this is Africa's last remaining wetland wilderness. Steve Boys has explored these waterways for 1,500 miles. It is a treasure, but it's a very delicate one. Simple water is the source and sustenance of life, of so much life. Yes. A Garden of Eden. This is a Garden of Eden, yeah. In these waters, one of Steve's favorite animals and one of the most dangerous in the world. Aggressive, territorial, and inevitably threatened by us humans. We're going around a hippo pool. What are you going to do when the hippo comes at the Makoro? A panic. <laughs> if I start making funny grunting sounds, you can join me. It'll try and stop him. Any other advice? Don't let your mind wander. Be in the wilderness, be wild, and you'll be safe. OK. Be at one with nature. I can hear them. Oof. He's telling us that he's there. Steve's been near fatally attacked, his canoe thrown over, his love for hippos and him. Uh, hippos do kill many, many people every year, typically on dugout canoes like this. Okay. <laughs> They've disappeared. Yep, we we'll be stressing them out. These three ton animals don't swim, they walk along the bottom, essential for keeping the waterways open. Guardians of the river, Steve calls them. They can spend five to nine minutes under there. Wow, they can sleep underwater. It is incredible to be so close to them. As the sun sets, one more breathtaking encounter. An animal we'll soon see more of. Big male lion. It's looking right at us. Now let's be careful. Calm. He turned on us here. Large, if we go 10 meters further, we're inside this space. And that is incredible. That is the best lion sight I've seen in my life. First time on is incredible. It'll only be a few hours before my pulse rate returns to normal. Okay. And we're really close there. If water is the lifeblood of Botswana, we're on the way to meet a couple who are its beating heart. Husband and wife conservationist Derek and Beverly Joubert. Tracking lions takes time. There's a cub track here. It's fresh. This is a couple of hours old. But after hours searching, there's a lioness. We find a pride. So there's a grandmother, a mother, and a, a cub. We've known these lions now for so seven years, I would say. Yeah. And we can track this family back about 20 years. Climbing to the top of a hill, we watched an incredible moment. A lioness conjoling her nervous cub to take the plunge. I was terrified of water anxious about the hippos and the crocs in there. These lions have had to adapt to going through water, whereas most lions in Botswana don't go through water at all. It's only in the Okavango. When Derek and Beverly first arrived in the Salinda Reserve, hunting had reduced the population to two female lions. Some 30 years later, the lions number over 100 and counting. Now Derek and Beverly must battle to preserve their life's work. They say they get their strength from their love for each other and their incredible motivation from their love for these lions. But Africa's conservationists 
always face an uphill struggle. Climate change, hunting, and put simply, humans all threaten this fragile world. Across the Okavango Delta, another fearless conservationist. Brave is not the word Brad Bresterlink would use about himself, but how else to describe a man who lives in the wild, among some of the most dangerous animals on Earth, for months at a time. This is your home. We're in your living room. I mean, it's not bad place, is it? Yeah, you can go back to London if you want. <laughs> I'm staying here. He likes to get close to its inhabitants. That big guy. Maybe too close. The power of these animals makes me feel unexpectedly like an endangered species. Close encounters are what Brad lives for. He's been following this pack of wild dogs for years. And as soon as they get on the move and start hunting, they'd be very difficult to keep to find, keep up with. And soon, the drama of the plains is all around us. What just happened? Saina's been training, obviously looking to pick up food from these dogs, and they're just getting fed up, so just attack it. As the sun goes down and we prepare to camp outside, we make sure we are into the wind. So that any sound travels on the wind. So even when you're sleeping, yeah. you're planning your next day, you're listening. 90% of the work at night, uh, that we do with lions is driven by what we hear at night. It's <laughs> really good. <laughs> Fed and watered, time for some advice. What do I need to know? Mm, torch, mainly. Right, yeah, just, just blind them. They don't really want to eat us. You know. They used That's to... good to know. <laughs> Snakes, spiders. That's why I sleep on top. <laughs> you sleep up there <laughs> and I sleep down here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Sure enough, as the stars rise in the southern sky, <laughs> predators are on the prowl. <laughs> Tell me what, what animals were there last night? Big male lion doing a territorial march up and down past us. Um, a hyena, a couple of times last night. Um, there must be a leopard harassing baboons. Uh, they're really performing that side. So, another day begins over the delta. You know, you live in a city. Do you wake up full of optimism every morning? I'd wake up with optimism every day. Optimism in the face of adversity seems like a common theme in this part of the world. You could be forgiven for thinking these past few years that our planet is trying to tell us something. Africa is a world like no other. Its future, our future, may depend on leaving a lighter footprint. But if I never get to make a trip like this again, I'll never forget it. Hey, look at hey, our Today All Day viewers. We see you. You guys look real good. Thanks for spending Tuesday with us. Thank you, Today All Day Nation. Of course, you're back for another episode of our digital show, Today in 30. We hoped you meant to click. Let's break down what we have for you today. First, President Biden's key speech today at the UN. It's his first there since he took office, and Savannah had the chance to speak with one of the leaders in the audience, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Yeah, he's making a big push for world leaders to sink a lot of money into the fight against climate change, and that's just one of the topics we yeah. discussed. It was really wide-ranging. It was an exclusive conversation. We'll have that for you coming up. And speaking of the environment, it is the focus of our new series on air and online. It's called Today Climate. And now we'll get things started with an eye-opening ride in a mobile lab that can detect surprising ways that we're all contributing to air pollution. Plus, we got a chance to visit with Amanda mm. Gorman, the young poet. She wowed at the inauguration. She's sharing a powerful new message. It's aimed at kids, a children's book. And it's talking about achieving your dreams. All that. Plus, we're going to show you how to kick up a boxed dessert mix with three hacks that are a piece of Cake. From one of my favorite bakers. It's the milk bar. The, you know, love the milk bar. The milk love bar. Christina Tosi. Let's mm -hmm. get to it. Let's just go straight to the cake. It's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. 
NBC's chief White House correspondent and weekend today, co-anchor of Peter Alexander's at the U.M. with the latest. Hey, Peter, good morning. Hey, Hoda, good morning to you. This speech wrapping up only a short time ago, a much more traditional United Nations speech from President Biden, his debut speech before the General Assembly and focusing heavily on trying to rebuild partnerships, to revitalize alliances and to restore the U.S.'s position as the global leader. But he is facing a lot of pushback on a series of topics, including the chaotic troop withdrawal from Afghanistan, as well as more recently, the U.S. excluding France from a submarine deal with Australia. The president addressing some of those criticisms. And as it relates to a U.S. foreign policy overseas, saying the focus would be not on relentless war, but relentless diplomacy. U.S. military power must be our tool of last resort, not our first. And it should not be used as an answer to every problem we see. Bombs and bullets cannot defend against COVID-19. To fight this pandemic, we need a collective act of science, 